what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to jump right into this ancient world full of mystery and empires vying at one another for control of the world in a new age. But there are six very special people who may influence where those empires go and what becomes of them. Now, we are joining this world at the end of the era, the end of the Trojan War, about 30, months, uh, 30 days back, and Greece has lost all its greatest heroes. Eritrea stands as the new place where everyone will go who sees themselves perhaps to become Greece's next hero. On those dusty Hellenic beaches, the red sand blows at the dead of night, but it is a warm, dry heat. And for miles and miles around, Eritrea is lit up in the night like a torch beckoning heroes forth. Then coast is nice, it's a calm sea. And there's a slight breeze in the air, the very dry heat. The mountainous range around Eritrea comforts it as though it's nestling the town and beckoning everybody forth, welcoming them even. But Eritrea is where the story begins. Adeus of Eritrea has sent word across Greece summoning all those who would think themselves to be the next hero of the country to prove themselves and to anoint themselves in front of the Pythia, the Oracle of Delphi, a most mysterious figure whose word commands both the start of wars and the fall of nations. So as you enter these giant gates to Eritrea, a somewhat small town but heavily guarded and heavily walled, you see many people from all over different empires, dragonborn, even an elf or two from the far flung north, perhaps a gnome, a halfling, a dwarf, all sorts of people of different shapes and sizes of skills and abilities gathered in one place to prove themselves before the Pythia and get the recognition they need, the renown, the fame to be a hero of Greece. So before we begin, I will join Larkin and Yarlin at the front of Eritrea, the doors are open, the gates are open, and you have just arrived, and you see even on the outside, people sharing in stories with one another, happily reminiscing, and even a slight tone of arrogance in their bragging of how I slayed this minotaur. I killed this grand beast on the shores of Persia. But what did you do? As yelling and larking, I hope I'm saying this correctly, because this is the first time yelling and larking, you enter. Eritrea through these grand gates and I'll ask you straight away as the campaign is your staging ground what you'd like to be doing as the world is spread out before you but it all begins here. Larkin would like to sort of look around and take in um, any sort of decked out um, sort of people in the crowd who people who look, look like heroes people look like they have money people who look like they just stand out more than the average uh, Eritrea goer. Okay, well, that sounds like a perception roll if I've ever heard one. So go ahead, Yam, yeah, and see if you can roll me a good perception roll. First roll of the campaign. Don't say the number yet, I wanna get prepared. Is it a good one? <laughs> I rolled not, I rolled like a D10 on accident. Hold on. Oh, great, right. well done. <laughs> right, cool. Uh, it's gonna be a 13. A 13. All right. Um, yeah, you can basically tell the difference between a well-to-do person and someone who may be a more normal resident of Eritrea, somebody who belongs here. It's mm -hmm. a very distinct difference between a townsperson and somebody who's in for an event. Being that they are heroes, they've worn their best armor and in some cases brought their finest robes and silks to show off what they can do. Okay, I want to nudge. So there is certain people in the crowd who do have a bit of money. Okay. On and like elbow yowling to my to my right. Yeah, yeah, what do you think? Um, do we do we look for for the festival games or or what about him? And pointing at uh, somebody who seems to be wearing slightly better armor than otherwise. Sure thing. It uh it looks good, but I, I need a place to perform first. Is there anywhere around that is an open area or anything that I can get to to 
make a scene in front of these people. <laughs> you can certainly try. Unfortunately, the competition is heavy. Everybody is so willing to prove themselves in this here collection of heroes. You'll see several, not only performers, bards, playing strange instruments that maybe you've never seen before, or people selling strange food you've never seen before as part of their skills, or even somebody standing upon the soapbox pontificating about certain political movements in far-flung empires and how they are superior. But how you make yourself known is up to you. Well, um, all right, let's find you somewhere good then. Somewhere busy, but uh, no. There's a lot of competition. I'm thinking high ground. Yeah, oh, yeah, that works. And if they're looking up, then they won't be looking at their pockets. <laughs> I like the way you think, yeah. <laughs> uh, is there anywhere high? Um, balcony or somewhere uh, like a stand or otherwise, Harry? Yeah, there's a few larger buildings in town which will have a balcony currently unoccupied as nobody's thought yet to maybe use a house that doesn't belong to them as their own personal stage. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> So it may be a good idea to at this point explain a bit more about Eritrea. Small, very compact town, narrow streets, and even like they've been paved in a very rudimentary way that's been imported from the Roman sort of side of things. A large, large open bay is the main feature of the town. Several boats and triremes are docked here. And even now, people take off strange implements and weapons as they welcome themselves into Eritrea by the alternative way of arriving, by ship rather than by foot. Um, but the mountains surrounding these towns sort of, sort of eclipse it almost. As you can't see anything else but these huge mountains that sort of nestle the town except for the coastline. But yeah, the small buildings around here will be there various manor houses for people who've made a good deal of trade from merchant working in Eritrea. All right, um, so can we skedaddle up to what seems to be the most unoccupied balcony, but that still overlooks the busy thoroughfare? Indeed, you can, but you come to a wooden door, which is, of course, closed. Whoever occupies this house, whether or not they're in, you do not know. But we'll get back to you, because as you scuttle past to this house, you run past a very strange-looking uh, person. Seems to be some kind of Roman-armoured gnome. But um, I will let, actually, you introduce yourself there, please, for it. If you want to tell me what you look like. Right. So <clears throat> you pass by this gnome and well, at first you don't recognize that he's a gnome because all you see is a big head of bright blonde hair. Looking down, you see the big ears and you realize this is not a child, uh, also indicated by the Roman armor. Uh, this is in fact a gnome in Roman armor, um, bright blonde hair and a, and a small upper lip mustache. He kind of gives you a very concerned look as you go by, but makes no move to stop you. Indeed, and no noob is necessary. They are just two um, very quite strange-looking girls making their way through town. But what's more occupying you, uh, Proet, is the uh, sort of distraction that your compatriot Karnak has currently um, absorbed himself with. So as you're walking through and around the centre of town, there is a large aqueduct that leads into the mountain range perhaps some sort of reservoir which provides fresh water rather than seawater to Eritrea. But at the bottom of this reservoir, the bottom of this um, aqueduct where it pours into a fountain, somebody has set up shop, another performer of a different kind. And all it says is, one kiss, one drachme. But although this concept is simple, a simple kissing booth, the amount of people around it is what immediately draws your attention in Carnox as well. He leans down to you and says, Prove it. There's a, there's a, there's a kissing move over there. Oh, I haven't had a good kissing a month or two. Oh. Right. Well, uh, as much as I love a good kiss, it is. Uh, would you like to to kiss such used lips, my friend? Used lips, new lips, all the same to Kiano. Come on, give me a drag, me. I want to kiss. Right. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> it's your money, and yeah, I'll I'll give him a drag, me. He grips it hard in his hand and says, good man, good man. And he'll walk very sort of swaggily over to this kissing booth and he'll push people side, one side to the other and then to the other side while saying, move aside, move aside. Kissing booth is a job for a real man. <laughs> and um, as these crowd parts, you'll see the occupant of the kissing booth seems to be 
blonde haired, sort of a cherubic woman, quite sort of large, leaning on it with one elbow on the top of the booth, just finished with her last customer, kissing on the cheek and dropping a drachmy, which you can see the bowl is overflowing by this point and dropping onto the <laughs> counter itself. Right. Uh, man. Oh, yeah, Preywood, uh, he's really not interested in the kissing booth very much, but he's going to keep an eye out for his his orc friend, Karnak. Sure thing. Um, and he's, he's also going to seek out uh, the person who he met yesterday, the uh, half-orc. Yeah, absolutely. Yesterday. Yeah, I will get to that. We will we'll, we'll have Karnak with you, most likely. As Karnak leans down and drops the single drachmy you've given him on the bowl there, and he points to his cheek and says, Plant one right here, love. Been a while since this old Roman's had a kiss. And with that, the woman will lean up and give him a kiss on the cheek. And he'll, he'll just sort of take a step back as though it was like a physical sort of thing to him, like a blow to him. And he holds his cheek and he looks to you, Pruitt, as he turns around and uh, walks off a bit dumbfounded. Never even said thank you or anything. But his eyes have just got this sparkle around and this glitter as he looks down and says, Well, Pruitt, you're missing out on that. Bloody hell. That was a, that was a hell of a kiss. <laughs> well, right. Uh, you, forget, uh, uh, you forget, my friends, that uh, I'm a gnome, and uh, she's not very attractive to me. But uh, well, thank you for the offer. Uh, if you like, Pruitt, I can pick. I can put you on the counter, and she can. Pick <laughs> you if you want. Uh, that is not necessary, my friend. Uh, but I will ask. You appear to have received a blow when she kissed you. Uh, how did it feel? Oh, it felt like summer roses. Felt like I was home again by a warm fire. Felt like a nice meal filling my stomach. I can't really explain it, Pruitt. Right. a bit different now. Let's keep an eye on that uh, that lady. Uh, it is not usual for a kiss to have such grand effect, no? Let's uh, let's keep an eye out. Uh, oh, and uh, another person to keep an eye out is uh, I saw some. Snake people passing by as you and T. I remember them in Egypt. Oh, I remember them. Harmless yes. enough. There's some over there, so let's keep an eye out for them too. We might have to be the unpaid police of this event. <laughs> I'm here for one reason and one reason only. I'm going to prove myself to the Parthia so she'll anoint me next hero of Greece. Well, you appear to have found a second reason, no? To uh, woo this lady. <laughs> <laughs> Once I'm anointed, Pruitt, she'll come to me. Don't you worry, I know how women work. <laughs> I'm sure um, you do, my friend. He'll wipe the sort of kiss mark from his cheek, and then he'll uh, make his way along with you. But while this is going on, um, watching the events, perhaps, from a stool nearby, um, we have an old man who may sort of cut a striking image in this town full of young people, full of hope, full of vigor, and all the gentlemen, a bit more crooked than the rest, at the sort of twilight years of his life. Not quite making sense why he's here, but would you like to go ahead and describe what you look like? Herodotus. Um, yeah, he's an old, bewildered man. Um, you see him walking along, just like, like making notes on scrolls and stuff. Um, picking up herbs smelling them and then carrying on walking very That's well it. but herodotus what comes up to you is a cloaked figure swinging what looks to be an incense carrier a small very thin container of hold brass that would swing side to side upon a long chain spreading this very scented smoke in any direction she goes and although she is small although she is unassuming the crowds part for her the same the way they did for that half walk not two minutes ago and as she comes up to you, sitting alone there, she looks down at you, her wide and very bright eyes cutting a very sharp gaze as they look down. She leans down and says, For what are you here? Oh, hello, dear. Um, I'm just here to pick up some herbs and some paper. You? Huh. It matters not why I am here. I only serve the Pythia. A strange coincidence indeed that you are here at such a magnificent event. If only to pick up paper, you can get paper anywhere. Why Eritrea? Uh, well, it's just a beautiful place. Really? 
I heard, mm. I heard they had pretty paints here. Indeed, there is many pretty paints and many pretty people. If not on the outside, then on the inside. And she'll touch your chest. She reaches down, and the hand she touches you with turns over, and in it there is a single coin. And upon the coin is the Roman numeral VI, the six. Please oh. take this. Oh, I'm not a beggar, dear. And I am not giving you money to spend, my friend. Instead, I am giving you something much more important. Oh, thank you. And I will just gently take it from my hand and look at it. When six tolls sound, you will go and see the Pythia. She will answer you a question, any question you wish. Thank you. Hmm. My pleasure. And as she backs away, um, looking at you, as she takes several steps back into the crowd, as it sort of consumes her again, you'll hear the bell toll. Not six times, but only three. And as this happens, you'll see several people in the crowd check the coins they have in their possession. And some of them pocket them again. Not their turn. Some of them look at it. They notice that it is a three. And you'll see several people from the crowd move their way towards the center of the town. Does this become an obvious thing that people are like in, in unison all checking that they have this shiny object in their hands? Yeah, if you can correlate the sound between the bells tolling and the numbers on the coins of which you have not yet been given, mm -hmm. I would say that's fair enough, indeed. He's already forgotten what the, the number was on his coin, so he checks again. <laughs> it's a six. <laughs> Very well. All right. Six. Sort of while all um, this this is happening, the, the coins, mm -hmm. the meeting, the, uh, the kissing booth, I want to like lean over to y'all again and go, do you, do you see that man there? He has very large ears. And just gesturing at Preywit there while he's mid conversation. And then. Yeah. You mean the child? Is, is that one? Is he? I don't think he's wearing armor. Things are crazy nowadays. I wouldn't blame him. I don't know, but right next to him is a bowl full of coin. She's got the idea, but I don't certainly want to go around kissing all these people. I mean, she seems to have quite a lot of money. Well, it's there. It's not in pockets. It's something to keep an eye on, but what is everybody suddenly looking at? Um, I think if we can get her to look away, maybe we can take the coin. I think it's crowded enough that it can spill. And I'm start walking towards uh, the kissing booth. As you are watching this kissing booth happening, there are still several people queuing up at the very moment, ready to give their own drachmi for a single kiss from this person. Yep. Are you pushing away through the crowd, or are you just going to wait? Yeah, I'm just sort of perusing by, like taking a, like a, a passing glance at the um, at the kissing booth. And as I do, I want a little magey hand to come up and attempt to knock it off the table. All right. Okay. I'd say that's a um, slide, probably a slide of hand check, actually, to cast the spell and make sure it happens without anyone noticing it was you. I want to do I, it from, um... from as far of a distance as possible. So like giving yelling and knowing luck. And uh -huh. just meandering that way so from 30 feet away um, sure and as you do this i am going to fix my microphone which is for <laughs> <Sure. laughs> while she's doing this i will be strolling past the kiss kissing booth potentially mm -hmm. uh pray would did uh mention that he was going to keep a, an eye out on these u on t so if it's okay i'd like to roll perception <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, buddy. Al. Right, you don't need to. In fact, as if you, and you watching them, watching out for them, you would have seen them. And although they're not, you know, they're not hiding, they are making their way back through the crowd. And if you can ignore um, your compatriots' sort of gentle bullying of you, you'll be able to see them no problem. But right, every time you try them. and focus on something, you'll get a punch in the arm from Hornak saying, "Brute, brute, what's up now? Where are we going? Where's the path here?" Hey, let's wait here for a moment. Uh, I think the uh, snake people will try to try to do something. They have a look in their eye. 
sure I'm thing. unsure of their intentions. You remember them, them in Egypt. They are far from home, so I do not know if they share the same ideas, but uh, it is best to keep an eye out and a hand on your pocket. And a 16 to knock that bowl over subtly. Yeah, I'd say that's fine, as the bowl sort of clatters off the side of the um, of the counter. There is a scramble for the coin. But funnily enough, over the next few seconds, it's not a scramble to pocket it. It's a scramble by everybody queuing to put it back exactly where it was. So whoever grabbed it is happy to put it back in the bowl as um, the person behind the kissing booth sort of wafts her face and sort of a, oh my, you're so, you're so kind. How clumsy of me. Can the mage hand oh scoop up like two or three coins at, um, on, on the way? Yelling will be helping <laughs> gather these coins while sweeping some under her skirt to then almost, almost gesture for Larkin to kind of reach down and take. Okay, sure. So... Um, as everybody is gripping these coins and putting them readily back in the bowl, um, yeah, you manage to grab some as well and you manage to put it in your pockets. And I'll say that you get a, it's a long rolling dice, put the coins there, uh, six drachmy yeah. that you manage to grab. As this is all going on though, at the soapboxes where everybody is pontificating their political movements, we join perhaps another person of a stranger person in this crowd a half orc of all things in the wrong area of the half orcs right, this microphone's got to go <laughs> jesus <laughs> christ okay right um let me figure out a way to do this <laughs> fix, yeah, your, fix your in. mic first yeah okay cool let me get that on i need to get a new thing for this mic um, how's everyone doing? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. But yeah. Um... This is so noisy. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh... Did you, you want me to go ahead and describe Harry? Yeah. Yes, please. I think that old man fell. Actually, no, don't. I, you know, it's you, you only get to describe your character once in a campaign. I don't want it to be questioned <laughs> by the fact that I've got a crap tripod. So, uh -huh. right, here I am, back up. <laughs> Here's my microphone, the dastardly thing. Right, so. Stop touching it. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you almost went there. So, not touching the microphone anymore. Um, yeah, amongst the soapboxes and people from distant empires sort of exposing what their empires do in regards to politics, uh, we find a half orc, perhaps out of place, more you'd expect half orcs around showing their strength. But go ahead and describe yourself, Antagonist. Uh, yeah, so he's um, sitting a little bit on some steps overlooking the central part of town. He has a potter's wheel out with some clay that he's molding into um, some small figures that he's creating the entire time. Uh, he, though he is has orcus features, and that's the first thing that you would notice looking at him, most of the rest of his physique is humanoid. It's very just simple, tall, kind of slim human, but the facial features with two little tusks and greenish skin around with a slight bulging forehead here. Mm, he says well. to himself, <clears throat> yes, that'll, that'll do for now. I must work on the next one. A half orc can't exist in this town without drawing at least a few eyes. And it's not long, Antagonist, before you'll feel a pull at your armor from behind. Pardon me, I'm just uh, I'm just here making my own wares, not trying to disrupt anyone. You're 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 a half orc, aren't you? Well, <laughs> I don't I don't know any other my parents, so uh, maybe quarter uh, orc, half orc, eighth orc. I don't know. And with this, he'll move his arm hand quite invasively up to your arms and feel for some muscles. Pretty strong, huh? Hmm. If you pull back some coin from my purse, friend, you won't bring back the hand with you. No, 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 no. I've got this really... Okay, come, come on, I'll show you. And um, with that, he's only look, He's only pointing about like three yards away towards... Not three yards, about 30 yards away towards what looks to be like a stage that's been hastily constructed and a large man standing on top of the stage there. And as you see him, this large man, if you are turning to look... Mm. I keep my eyes slightly cocked toward the other kid, but I, I, I do glance where he's looking. Sure thing. So you'll see a towering figure upon this platform of almost bone white skin, but with intricate marks upon it. Almost seven and a half feet tall, this man stands with folded arms over a bare chest, but leather armaments down from his waist down. 
And as he sort of lowers his arms and bares his huge pectoral muscles, a man, what looks to be some sort of villager, walks up with a quarterstaff, readies it, places it against his chest, rears back and swings it wide until it smashes on the guy's chest and he just lets out a single, ha! And with that, he brushes <laughs> the man aside and he says, that guy who's grabbed you there, Antagonist says, he's, he's, he's offered 50 drachmi to whoever can, whoever can make him flinch, whoever can make him hurt. I reckon you can do it. Mm, oh, fuck, right? He's supposed to be strong. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't you a feisty little one? How much is the entry fee? Oh, he's free. He just wants to prove himself. Every man wants to prove himself, and I start to gather my potter's tools together and make mm-hmm. sure my two figures are uh, are nice and pristine as I put them in my bag that I've been making. And I launch that over my shoulder, and I stroll up to the to the 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 giant man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you approach, he'll indeed even brush aside the rest of the people who are already queuing. He gives them a stern look, and they all sort of drop their quarter staffs immediately as he points to you and says, "You." You look a pretty strong. Well, Perhaps you can be the one who drops the Baldur's Blut. Hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't dare think that I could best you, friend, but one swing, one chance. I'll take that. <laughs> Pick up one of the quarter staff. And come to me. Come to Baldur's Blut. I tire <clears throat> of all of these terribly weak villages. Mm. So I pick up the quarterstaff, I weigh it at my hands a bit. How does it feel? Feels sturdy? Feels like it's not fake? Feels like a cane. Like a cane? Feels like, <laughs> a cane? Not, like it's pretty pretty weak. Mm-hmm. Like a bamboo cane for gardening, pretty much. Seems to me, friend, you've had your uh, all these people swatting you with like flies. Indeed. You stand I, a real I, blow, I, can you? Of course, Baldur's blood can stand any blow, mm. especially any blow from people in this town. They mm. are all weaklings compared to Baldur's blood. What say <laughs> you, Orc? With this, the guy leans down, and he's one of the only people in town who will have to lean down to meet your gaze at quite a astounding height. And he gives a wide sort of yellow tooth grin at you. <clears throat> Get patterns over his eyes. Doesn't seem quite human, but he nice. sort of rears back up and sort of brushes himself down and just looks at you and says, Give it uh, your best uh, shot. All right. On the count of three, then, hmm? Count to whatever I... you want. Uh, I will be waiting. As I turn around and start to rear myself up, I start to speak in uh, Orcish and I say, One, something that I Imagine he doesn't know. Mm. And then <laughs> my... go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Instead of saying two, though, I will cast <laughs> Searing Smite on myself. Okay. Interesting. So it'll sound like a little verbal thing of uh, little arcane words that I mutter under my breath. Mm-hmm. And I hold up two with my other hand. And now I am blessed with Searing Smite. All Three. right in common and I turn and whack him right in the chest. Well, go ahead and make <laughs> me an attack roll then if you're trying to hit him. Ooh, 18 plus three, 21. Wow, okay. <laughs> so he sees you rearing up and he let he bears his chest, sort of puffs it out, ready like a stone wall. But he doesn't expect you to swing around at such ferocity and smash the cane until it snaps on his chest. And he just sort of lets out a... <laughs> And as as he feels that, he bursts into flame. <laughs> yeah, they, across the sort of red welt that's left across his chest, sort of a, a cindering flame on it. As he just sort of takes a step back once and says, it didn't hurt at all. <laughs> he has to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually going to make him do that, you know, because that's what I thought would be a good idea. Uh, he got an eight, so yeah, he'll just sort of take a step back, and <clears throat> in his eyes, his large, sort of huge, strong eyes, piercing blue, you can see the welling up of tears. <laughs> he sort of just sort of go down his cheeks. He says, "God, bring on the next one." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
Elder's blood is ready. <clears throat> yeah, you see him to stand, stand, try and stand proudly, but uh, his teeth are gritted and his fists balled as he just tries to contain this pain. He's not doing a very good job of it, and everyone can see what's going on. Every six seconds, he unless he puts out the flame, he takes another D6 fire damage. So he All took, right, sure. You're not trying to damage kill the guy, so he, like, <laughs> no. he, he does indeed pat off the flames. He pushes them down as though they didn't matter at all. And he just gives a, puts a hand on your chest and says, I didn't think you'd use any magic. I didn't say to use any magic. You didn't say to not use magic, friend. Hey, you are a tricky one, eh? Huh? Very well. But this does not count. Everybody heard it. And with this, Antagonist, uh, there's a hand on your shoulder again. But it's not the same pulling hand as before. And as you turn around, it's a red-cloaked woman swinging the same incense burner as before. And she just says, A display of strength is as good as any other. Why, why approach me now? Hmm. Like to keep an eye on things around town. Make <laughs> sure that the Pythia's time is well spent. Fair enough. Spe- mm-hmm. Speaking of spending, and she reaches behind her back and pulls out a single coin, and she flips it up in the air to you. I catch it. Look at it. When the bell tolls, you'll be able to see the Pythia. That's a bit vague. Do you, do you have any more directions than that? She is in the center of town. Mm. Follow the sounds of the bells, and the Pythia will see you. Prometheus blessing upon you, then. And she I extend not- the same to you, friend, as he's like still in line. Prometheus, she doesn't answer you. Prometheus wants many for his army. You would serve him well. And I walk away. Hmm. You feel the eyes of both of them upon your back as you make your way. And now, four bells toll. And you'll see again, most people checking their coins to see, just to remind themselves if this is the time they are called. But it's not quite just yet. But on the outskirts of... Sorry, go ahead. What does my coin say? It says VI. Okay. (laughs) Coincidentally enough, right? (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) on the outskirts of town... That's where it's gathered all those that control many forms of beasts and creatures, which may not be more welcome in the crowds of an actual uh, amount of people, maybe scare people, maybe fright, like, may fend them off, who knows. But um, it is here where we find our collections of different peoples from around the different empires that control animals and creatures. And it's here where we find Kara. Would you like to describe yourself? Kara is, she looks kind of dusty, kind of dirty. She's bit, definitely been traveling for quite a while, um, dressed in dark browns and greens. She carries a staff with her that has some mm-hmm. vines on it. Sure thing. Yeah. And um, you will have people coming up to you from time to time, Kara, um, and they will inquire as to, what it is you're doing here on the outskirts of town. Indeed, one person comes up to you, bow in hand already, and a strange looking dog with sort of a blue shriek down its back, um, sort of looking up at you also. But the woman looks to you and says, you see no animal with you? No, I don't have any animals with me. Hmm. Well, this is where we've decided that those who tame animals will abide for the time being may i ask why you're here i just enjoy spending time with them hmm most interesting why are you in eritrea if you don't mind me saying you don't look the type to be worthy of the pythia's attention i don't know about worthiness i but i do seek the pythia okay pause because fuck me right <laughs> <laughs> right so kill it with fire kill it i'm gonna <laughs> put this down here and for this session i am gonna sit down because there is no other hope today. <laughs> what a pain in the ass that all is unbelievable right <sighs> 
Oh my, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> crazy. Crazy that you try and do something so simple. Oh, God, right? Okay. You were destined to sit. Now you just got to stop touching it. Well, it's here now, and it can't fall any further, for God's sake, stupid thing. But all right, so, Kara, this person looks at you deep in the eyes. And sorry, <clears throat> could you re re repeat how you responded to her, sorry? Oh, I don't know much about being a hero, but I do seek the Pythia. Oh, yes. Well, we are all here to prove ourselves. And what do you seek her for? I have nothing to prove. I have questions. Questions. Interesting. Very well. What can you offer the animals in this town? You say you enjoy them so much in company and... I can't tell much about you, and I'm a very good judge of character, usually. What can I offer the animals? Is that what you're asking? Hmm. What do you do? I do a lot of things. What do you do? I work with my friend here, and we kill monsters, usually. When I heard that call was given out for those who dream themselves heroes, I was first a volunteer, and here I am seeing myself surrounded by what I perceive to be, and she'll look at you and say, weaklings. Hmm. Interesting. Well, why are you out here then? Shouldn't you be inside trying to prove your might or whatever it is you're doing? Hmm. My time will come, and she flashes a coin between her fingers as though appearing from nowhere with a five on it. And she says, but will yours? I don't suppose you've received one of these yet, have you? I have not, but that doesn't mean I won't. Mm, I'd be surprised. I guess we'll see, won't we? Okay, right. There is so much shit going on around. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm. put it in the simplest place it still finds a way to fall over I mean it's insane <laughs> right? but okay. when you said it couldn't fall any further I knew that was going to happen <laughs> <laughs> it still found some way to do it but Okay, <laughs> episode cool. 1 of Pantheon the battle of the mic <laughs> <laughs> it's right bloody hell I should roll initiative against this fucking microphone okay. <laughs> right. so far it's been in that one I think yeah definitely <laughs> I'm losing this battle immediately but okay Make wisdom saving throw <laughs> yeah we fix this. Okay, it's not going to work. Whatever. Right, so no pop filler. We can, no we problem. Can, we can sort it out in a break. <laughs> yeah, sure. But okay, uh, with that, the woman sort of narrows her eyes at you, not getting the reaction she wants, not getting the rise out of you. Um, and she moves on. But behind her comes one of the same red cloaked figures that's that sort of scatter around all the town. Um, and she looks down to the side at you and the woman who went walks away. And she just lets out a singular sort of slight smirk as she looks down and she holds a coin in her grip. And she says, not rising to challenges is a trait not many heroes respect. It's an admirable I, quality. I have no interest in quarreling. Mm. Yet she had interest in quarreling with you, but you admonished her. I'd very much like to put you in front of the Pythia. Please take this. That. And she'll give you a single coin Thank with a you. VI on it. But as this is going on, um, the five bells begin to toll throughout the town, from the center of the town. And the woman who parted from you just recently lifts up her coin, flashes you one last gaze over her shoulder with a single smirk and makes her way towards the center. When she does that, I'll hold up the coin I just got. I yeah. just cut him. Her eyes widen and she looks from it to the woman who gave it to you. And she just turns around now and actually approaches and says, are you kidding me? Does it mean nothing to receive a coin? I thought these were given to the heroes, not to these, these wandering villagers who pretend. And the red, clo red, clo red cloaked figure just does not answer her and moves by her, brushing her at the shoulder, moving on, and you can hear the sort of jingle of the coins in her pouch as she moves. I'm just going to nod at the woman who's having a fit and say, good luck with the Pythia. <laughs> and she'll walk off. 
no longer acknowledging you. But we'll cut back to um, Yarling and um, Larkin, who have uh, approached this uh, this door here now. Um, well, I, I'll actually like to explain what you're doing, but before I do that, something I skipped over earlier is, of course, having you guys describe what your characters look like. So, <coughs> Go ahead, wanna... Larkin first. I'll say yeah. Larkin. Sure. Um, so Larkin is um, short, dark, sort of fading into a reddish colored hair, um, scales that sort of gradient from toe to neck and they, they, they stop there so she has more of a human-esque face despite being serpentine pretty much everywhere else um uh still wearing somewhat of her egyptian garb the the, the puffy pantaloon pants that have been patchworked together um pulled up at the calf so she can still be quick and nimble um and then just a, a sleeveless hooded um top with a a sort of makeshift leather um, and fabric attached a box um, into a sling, sort of a an accessory attached to her. Okay, interesting. Yeah, before we go any further, I'll just say, go ahead, um, and Yaling, would you like to describe yourself? Uh, Yaling is a more human-looking uh, person. You wouldn't really think that she was Yuanti until you notice the occasional patches of golden scales uh, around her curves and long black hair, but emerging are these bright green piercing snake-like eyes with the um, pupils like long and thin. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> in quite, kind of almost gypsy-esque uh, attire of, uh, it's quite showy, it's got a lot of bling to it. Um, mm -hmm. And she is carrying cassonettes as her musical instrument and pretty much jingles wherever she goes. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, should I make you roll disadvantage on stealth checks? <laughs> Never. <laughs> you, around the sound, so. you imagine she jingles wherever she goes. Very well, gotcha. It gives off that image like it would be, right? No worries. Yes. <laughs> but okay. Um, so you guys, you were looking for, I think, a way onto the balcony to perform. Do you like to tell me how about you go about doing that? Well, post our, our collection of uh, kissing booth coins, um, mm -hmm. is there a sort of a side street or, or, or alleyway esque thing adjacent to this house with a door and a balcony? Yeah, sure. I'll say there's definitely um, sort of several little, very small um, divisions between the houses. And you could make your way down one, but it's probably got a bit of uh, debris around, broken barrels and crates and things, but you can certainly squeeze your way down. How tall up is the balcony? I'll put it on about like a second story. So I'd say about 10 so feet, 10 to 12 feet. Do you think, Larkin, do you think you could give me a leg up? <laughs> um, perhaps, how, <laughs> let's give it a try. Yep. And sort of just after processing that a bit and being like, all right, why why not? Mm -hmm. Find a little bit of the alcove in the in the side, and as I suppose, as inconspicuously as one can, um, <laughs> boost um, yelling. Yeah, sure. Uh, easy enough to boost yelling up, but the um, the height of it does not get her all the way but you could if you want go ahead and roll me an acrobatics please uh, or athletics your choice uh, being able to climb up the wall from how far you get roll it with advantage i guess because um Come she's on. helping you Let's get up there. <laughs> okay the first roll was a four okay the second roll was a nat one <laughs> all right okay Come so, on. so i'll four. take the four plus four so eight. <laughs> all right sure so <laughs> I guess what happens is um, your your foot is being balanced by Larkin beneath you, um, but she sort of steps backwards and it ends up like you're just not attached to anything, but she's just holding you upwards and you sort of back out the alley until you fall backwards. You drop about, we'll say about five feet to avoid you having to roll damage onto your back. <laughs> Larkin, I thought you got me. I, you know, maybe you could be a little more agile. We have to work on your footwork. Um, all right. Me? Well, I wasn't using my feet, I was using... Work my... on my footwork? Have you not seen my dancing? Okay, no one here has been... For years. Yeah, we're not going to have this conversation again. 
how about a oh, change of plans? Um, every time that bell tolls, people check their pockets and skitter off somewhere. What if we, I'm curious where they're going? We should. I mean, I've never seen the Pythia, I've only heard of the Pythia, so maybe we can go follow these people and perhaps they're going to the Pythia. Not a bad idea, and let's say they use this coin to pay, we can maybe take that. I don't know, but I'm curious what it does, and I don't know what they're for, what it gets you, but I'd like to find out. Well, if we need any distraction, just let me know, okay? I always do. Come on. And I want to pull her along and just follow sort of the flow of traffic in that direction. Yeah, sure. Um, yelling, sorry, just the mm-hmm. yelling would want to make sure that no one saw her falling. <laughs> a pretty hard thing to do there. Yelling, unfortunately. There's plenty of people around. Some people may have even scooted to try and help you up at that point, but many people do see you fall and it's very embarrassing. You should be ashamed of yourself. I am um, extremely embarrassed. <laughs> Set. Yeah, laugh them off and like give her a nudge, like we were like pretend scuffling, and then like let's go, let's go. She uh-huh. just shows her fangs at anyone, kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just scare a few people off, I guess, as you sort of bear your fangs. Right. Them. But there is a few people who try and help you up, and sure enough, you're back on your feet. But um, a few people are looking at you a bit suspiciously now. Like. I'm ushering her along like she's like my feral, angry cat. Like, just don't mind her. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, but you can follow the sort of flow of people into the center of town, and surely enough, you come to what seems to be some sort of shrine, some sort of temple, but it is the very, um, sort of very center, uh, where there are several statues surrounding you. One is of, um, it's four statues before a large sort of pillared building. Um, one is of Theseus, who was the founder of Athens, a great hero from past times. The other of Perseus, another hero who all heroes sort of aspire to be. Another great hero famed for killing the Gorgon Medusa. And another is of a real more recently construction, uh, Achilles, uh, one of the great heroes lost during the Trojan War. And um, what seems to be a strange attraction is the fourth pedestal, which is empty, as though it's beckoning a new hero to come forth. But upon that pedestal, there is a man sort of flexing his muscles sort of looking down at what seems to be some sort of uh, potter, but not quite a potter, there's the pots already made, but he's painting the four heroes around the pot and he's painting the last person upon the pedestal. It's not long before the man jumps down, drops the guy with the pots, a few drachmi, and the guy gives him the pot in exchange. And then the next person goes up and flexes their muscles and the guy begins painting again. <laughs> If only we could paint. That seems like quite an interesting gig. Well, we don't need to paint. Uh, did I see where the money went after the exchange? Which money are you talking about, sorry? The ones that they pay for the pottery. Oh, right. Um, it just goes into the potter's sort of uh, the pouch that he keeps getting, um, opening it and putting it into his pouch every time somebody hands him coin for painting their caricature amongst the heroes. So it's on his person? Yeah. Oof. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is there the Pythia anywhere visible? Is is she's wh- where or whatever she, um, it seems she might be? Seems like um, the large building behind the statues, the pillared building, is the one where most people, when the bell tolls, are queuing up to join. Are there are there guards or t- like townsfolk sort of like keeping watch on the entrance? There are several um, of the Pythia's assistants with their red cloaks and their incense swingers, like incense swinging sort of brass things that spread smoke smoke around. But also as you get closer to the temple where the Pythia is, there is also similar uh, people with red cloaks, but instead of uh, robes, they wear armor. Okay. Are there any kids running around? Um, I'd say, yeah, there's a couple of kids probably milling around at this point at night. It's a big event in the town and most, most likely locals from Eritrea. Can I attempt to stop like like one that looks local? Yeah, sure. Uh, easy enough to do. And it looks, um, it, um, he looks up at you uh, and he just uh, gives a sort of confused, puzzled look like, I, I, haven't, got, I haven't got anything good. I, I don't. That, that's all right. Uh, hi there. I just actually just have a question for you. You seem to know your way around here pretty well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know all the secret places and things. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll have to share that with me. I love secret places. Uh, Don't worry, I like secret places too. But 
first, before we do that, all these people in the in the red robes, can you tell me about them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they, they showed up around a, a week ago or so. I don't know much about them, though. They tend to keep to themselves. I haven't spoken to any of them either. Oh, okay, all right. Is there anything you can tell me about this festival? What's the most exciting thing you've seen here? Oh, I saw a guy lift a whole pillar over his head and oh. threw it at another guy. And the oh, other guy, wow. I think he died. But it was great to watch. But there was a lot of blood. And the other guy was like a bit of like a pudding afterwards. But I mean, that guy was, the guy who threw it, they said he wasn't allowed to be a hero because he he, he didn't have um, the, the temperament. The, te- the, 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 the temperance. The temperance. Oh, of course. He couldn't um, temper his strength very well, could he? Uh, yeah, that that's what they said, yeah. Sure. Yelling will put a hand on this kid's shoulder, kind of creeping up from behind. <laughs> that came across wrong. Um, <laughs> and uh, wow. we'll just kind of <laughs> lean somewhat down to the kid and uh, just kind of go, uh, I think you should go back indoors. It's not safe for a kid out here. Especially when men make other men pudding, as you say. Ah, oh, but then I'd miss all the fun. Yes, yeah, st- let, let, let him have some fun, Yal. This is a once in a lifetime uh, festival. But he, um, those secret places. What's your What's your favorite one? Oh well, there's a uh, this 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 one that's down the uh, alley behind the temple. If you go to the statue of Dionysus, there's a little hole and you can crawl down. And where does it lead? It goes deeper to a dark tunnel. I've never been down. We always try and go down, but we never really get that far because it gets pretty scary down there. So. Oh, goodness. Well, thank you very much. What was your name, young man? It's Iodidas. Iodidas. Well, thank you very much. You have fun at the festival and be careful and look out for men with large objects and who look like they can make other men pudding. I will look out for men with large objects <laughs> and who throw, make other men pudding. <laughs> Perfect. All right, will do, will do. Okay. Gonna... I've got to catch it with my friends. So I'm going to... And then he'll just sort of yep. run off. What a good boy. But yeah. <laughs> After receiving the coin, uh, <clears throat> Antigonus made his way toward the center of town and he's very curious whether the people that enter ever come out. Okay, yeah. Um, if you spend some time watching, you'll see several people do go in. They're in there for some time, but they come out all looking puzzled together and even chatting amongst one another. But they do indeed return. Mm. Um, sort of, uh, but they, some of them stay together and wander off in do- different directions, or they just part ways immediately and leave the town, it seems, or make their way to leave the town. Mm. All right, I've set up my, finished my little last bits of crafting as I watch this this events happen from the corner there. Mm-hmm. So we'll cut back to uh, Pruitt. Um, what was it exactly you were doing? Right, so Pruitt was following Pruitt. the uh, 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 yelling and uh, yelling and Larkin for a little bit, but he saw the, uh, yelling fall. Mm-hmm. So and it, uh, he kind of notices that his, his sword was almost halfway out of the scabbard, his Gladys was halfway out of the scabbard, but then he sees her fall and he kind of looks back at his hand and, uh, <clears throat> uh, perhaps I'm overreacting. They do not appear to be professional thieves and they appear to have sounded the alarm much better than we ever could have. <laughs> Barrett, we don't have to arrest every person who commits a crime. We're not Roman soldiers anymore. Right, right. You are right. It appears I'm still looking for the next battle. And uh, it is not here. But maybe I should participate. I did not wish to become a Greek hero, and I still don't. But perhaps Rome has a role here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. This place doesn't look as big as good as Rome. (laughs) Maybe it is true. I don't know. I haven't got much to say about it. But with that, um, one of the same assistants actually comes up. Not to you, Prewit, but to Karnak. Mm-hmm. and um, hands him a coin um, and he looks at it he looks down at you and he says, Barrett, this woman is giving me money I, th- uh, th- yes, thank uh, you what do I do? Do I, do I I haven't got anything for you right, it seems that uh, you are not the only 
person receiving coin today. Uh, look at the coin. Does it have any special uh, appearance? And he hands it down to you. It's got um, a v- six. It's a six in it, Pruitt. Yes. Who's it? <laughs> well, six, seven. I, I'm going to call after the lady um, that gave him that. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, a woman. She just pauses in the street. And then after a few seconds, turns around. Uh, this one's missing an eye, it seems, but <laughs> not with any eye patch or anything, just a closed eye with a scar over it. And she just looks down at you and says, Yes. Uh, this coin with the six, is this uh, <clears throat> to enter an area at uh, the hour of six? Or what does this mean? When six bell, uh, when six tolls of the bell, you will have an opportunity to meet at the Pythia. Make sure not to be late. This was given to my friend. Do I need one too? If it's come into your possession, that's all that matters. We well, don't. Then we will have to split the coin. <laughs> Hmm, very funny. And she fishes out another coin and she goes and places it in Karnak's hand, a diff- another coin in addition to the one you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pruitt, do I, do I take the coin? Uh, yes, yes. Does it have the uh, six on it as well? And he lifts it over to his eye. Times. Mm, he lifts it over to his eye and says, no, it's just seven. What does it uh, mean, seven, then? Well, it appears uh, that uh, one of us will go after the other. Yeah, you go first. I've got some kissing to do. And then he'll make his way back over to the kissing counter. <laughs> uh, Karnak, make sure not to use the coin you just received. No, <laughs> use the different ones. Up, Ruben, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> make his way back over. Apparently, whatever magic speed works on him works pretty well. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Excuse me. So, I'm um, cutting back over to um, Herodotus there. Uh, as you sit down in the street, thumbing your new coin, a man comes and sits down next to you, much younger than yourself, but of a similar rope pattern. He sits down next to you and he puts a hand on your shoulder, uh, tapping you to look to him. Yeah, I'll look. I knew it. I knew it in my deepest heart. I knew it. You are Herodotus, no? Uh, y- yes. Oh, wow, it has been so... Oh, I, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sure you get this all of the time. I am a huge fan. Your treaties on the Iberian Peninsula and its similarities with the Icelandic North, oh, it was inspired. I don't even think I remember how you related the Dwerga Dwarves to the Elvens of the North, but it was the same culture. Oh my gosh, I have, with such cadence as well. Tell me, what are you working on now? I must know. Uh, so, what What did you say, sorry? I said you are Herodotus, yes? I, I've yes. seen your bust before. I've seen it in, I'm, I'm sure it is you. The beard is unmistakable, yes? Uh, Palamedes? Where are you, stupid bird? All right, and as this... Um, a sort of very plump, tawny owl sort of flutters down like, and falls down on your shoulder, Herodotus. <gasps> and it looks down at you with a sort of stern gaze with a large yellow eyes. It says, what? What is it, Herodotus? He's saying that we did some things. And with that, it just turns its head like 180 degrees to the guy and then back to you. Well, maybe we did do some things. Yes, we did do some things, yes. Do you remember? Do I? Uh, Probably not, no. (laughs) Uh, Yes, yes. Yes, them things, yes. Good good goodbye. uh, He gets gets up, (laughs) panicking. It's important to know that only Herodotus can hear this. It is a psychic connection between him and the bird. I didn't think it was. I thought we were going with it weren't. No, it is indeed oh. this time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it'd be unfair to give you an awakened animal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it sort of uh, shakes its head again and then takes off into the sky. And then the man looks at you and says, You're a lot stranger than I had in mind when I, re- when I read about you. <laughs> Tell me, you, you, 
you are writing a thesis, you are writing some kind of documentation of this event, or what are you doing here? Uh, I'm come to get some paints. You know, shows like some some colours of yellows and oranges and stuff. I- I'm looking for some blues. <laughs> you are looking for some blues, yes. Are you... <laughs> I could have sworn you were Herodotus. Maybe, maybe it is your parents. They like Herodotus too, and they named you after him. But no, your age. You must be him. Why don't you? What is wrong with you? Uh, nothing. I, I, well, I uh, I lost my memory. I'm sorry. It is okay, my friend. It is okay. I just did not expect to see you here, and I have so much to discuss with you. My name is Cicero. I am. I am. A, I am trying to be a a person like you who writes about distant cultures and peoples. But I did not know it such a, it took such an effect on the mind. Um, I can't remember. I'm afraid, boy. He pulls out some scrolls and stuff like that. There'd probably be some. Some bits of history and stuff on them, but um, he'll start like looking at them. No, no, not that one. <coughs> right. Well, yeah. With that, he sort of stands up and brushes himself down, and says, "Well, they do say never to meet your heroes, eh? I don't know, but it is a, it is a shame. I had so much to discuss with you, but your memory it is gone. You say? Oh, I'm afraid so, boy. And how did this come about? You some magic?" I don't, I don't remember. Mm, stands to reason, I suppose. Checks out. Um, is there is there nothing I can do to help you? Perhaps a magical cure or some. Oh, can that can, can that be done? I have never heard of magic being able to restore the memories of a man, but I am sure if you seek, seek out uh, Hippocrates, he is the one who would know. Hippocrates, let me write that down. You know him very well, I believe. He is one of your friends. Is he? Indeed, he is. You you do wrote a, you wrote a document together. I did. Well, where does he? Where does this man live? He is in Athens. Athens. Where's Athens? Oh my word! It is worse than I imagined. Herodotus, do you even know who you are? I'm Herodotus. <laughs> my gosh. How tragic. One of the greatest minds in all of history to fall to such an affliction. Herodotus, yes, I will help you. You only need to ask for me. My name is Cicero. Cicero? No, no, Cicero. 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 Yes, that one. Yes. <laughs> Say it again to me, please. C- Cicero. 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 Yes, I am from Iberia. Iberia. I will make sure you can speak with Hippocrates. Maybe he can help you. Does he have some blue paint? I'm going to go now, Herodotus. I do not have your blue paint, but I hope you get better in the future and then we can talk more about your history. Uh, What was his name? Hippo? Uh, Hippocrates. Hippocrates. (laughs) Thank you. You're most welcome. And he'll just sort of pat you on the shoulder and he'll I'll back be, away from you. I'll be you. sure to visit him in Iberia. Ugh. And he'll look back and he's quite concerned about you. So he'll come back and say, no, 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 not Iberia. Okay, Herodotus, listen to me closely. I am from Iberia. Um, Hippocrates is in Athens. 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 Thank, thank you, boy. It is my pleasure. You know, you'll be very careful, Okay. Okay, thank you. And he'll uh, pat you again on the shoulder and he'll reapproach one of his friends standing nearby and you'll see them, he'll see him whisper something to him and they'll both look at you and he'll nod and say, yes, that is him. He's sort of talking about you, but <coughs> beyond that, they just walk away after that, leaving you on your lonesome. Oh, God, now I feel bad for your character. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so, getting back to, um, let's go back to Yaling and um, Larkin. 
Mm -hmm. um, as you've seen this sort of uh, large, large temple with pillars, sort of a uh, large display of different gods above it. And the pillars there, there are several vacant ones, mostly Achilles, Perseus, Theseus, and a vacant one for people to stand and pose while the potter paints their caricature. Um, there are several people going in and out of the uh, temple at all times. If you stayed there for some time, you'd have seen the fourth and the fifth people enter sort of um, using their coins to get in and stuff, so. Handing them to a guard outside. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go on, go on. <coughs> Sorry, cold. Um, <coughs> I have all that, that's all I had to say. They, they yeah. just hand their coins to a guard outside and they enter the temple and the door shut behind them, but incense swings from the assistants as they enter. And then you said people, earlier people come out, some come out, some don't always later sort of confused. Yeah, well, they just sort of look perplexed. Yeah, exactly. Um, some stay together, some part ways. Some look angry. Some look like a bit happy. Who knows? Like different expressions come out in different ways. Can I approach two things? Can I approach someone um, who has exited and made their way out? <coughs> but as as I'm walking towards them and bringing Yaling with me, um, mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> attempting. <laughs> To bring her with me. <laughs> Larkin. You can try and drag her along if you want. Is it contested? I'm going to get into combat here. <laughs> between you two. It's a little, a little bit contested. It's more hesitant. Just Larkin, we probably shouldn't. I know you're curious, but that's not what we're here for. If we can't perform and we can't steal off people because they wear their money, then we might as well sit down and beg. It's what we do. Yes, but this doesn't happen everywhere. It's happening only now. It's something very curious is going on. Don't aren't you at the least bit like wondering what it is? Not at all. Ignoring her upon saying that entirely, like she'll see the sort of familiar purple greenish swirl as um, Eldritch sight detect magic triggers. Okay. Um, scope around specifically towards the temple or towards people's pockets if the coin lights up or anything like that. Yeah, absolutely. And your detect magic sort of sight lights up like a flare. Several people here have brought several magic items with them, all being very prospective heroes. Some of them have already on their journeys and have a claim to their name, magic items of some renown. You'll see several sort of things light up underneath robes, in bags, um, sort of innocuous items sometimes, like a single caricature of a, a figure or... Um, some kind of necklace on someone else or a hairpin in some cases different pieces of jewelry a weapon may indeed sometimes light up as well um i would like to sort of approach whoever has one of those an item I know, an item that is seems more readily available and not tucked away but mm. is also exiting right so hopefully those two things line up if possible yeah sure okay <coughs> i'll just be lent against the wall <coughs> arms crossed kind of pouting realizing that larkin has just wandered off we'll just and then follow on <laughs> yeah absolutely um so as this happens um oh, sorry uh, larkin the um we'll say around between the fourth and fifth bells at this point. So the, the people, the fourth bell summoned people will be exiting the temple and you have a time to catch some of them um, as they make their way in, into the town. And as you're looking for one who has some kind of magical item on display, you're saying? Just, just one that's less tucked away or less large, like a smaller item. Um... Okay, sure. Um, so going up to one, you see a man in a large sort of long robe that drags behind him, like almost like a wedding dress style. Um, but it's part of yellow silk with sort of even deeper yellow cuffs. Um, seems to be some sort of yontai like yourself, but the scales much more prevalent around the hairline and around all the way around, almost like he has a beard of scales down onto his chest and different sort of anti, not anti, asymmetrical patterns around his skin. Okay, then I'll absolutely um, sort of approach him. Uh, excuse me. Yes. How how was your experience in there? What happened, if I may ask? My experience is that the Pythia knows not what she speaks. She told me to return to Egypt before I had no future as a hero. All this Greek nonsense that she speaks with the power of the gods. What nonsense indeed. 
Why would you speak with the power of the gods and not have them speak themselves? Imagine saying I was not worthy. Well, it must, you must have thought, thought it not nonsense if you came to speak with her. Silence. I shall not hear that. Did you make someone the pudding earlier? <laughs> I know what you speak, and indeed it was not myself. And indeed, this guy looks a bit more we- like wiry, sort of um, a bit weaker than anyone who would possibly match the description of the colossal figure you heard of earlier. Lodkin, remember the man before was big. Yeah, but he seems... Um, pardon me. He seems... A- <coughs> um... So she told me to be a, a hero, and, and what, what does she look like? I need, it's not very, I don't really care if you're a hero, I just want to know um, what the purpose is. She is young. She dresses in a red robe like all the rest of her assistants. Is she magical? I struggle to say. There is some strong magic in there, but it is not what, nothing, nothing offensive, nothing dangerous, more like an aura. Fascinating. All right, thank you very much, and very dis- disregard him, turn back to Yaling, if you yeah. away. Yeah, and um, just to explain, the magical item you saw on him was a wand tucked into his belt. Um, as though he could reach it at any time. Looks sort of like a quick draw wand. Mm. Larkin, the only reason I came with you was to make money. I knew that your curiosity would get the better of you, but we need to focus on why we're here. All right, all right. All right. Um, then you got your plan, then. Where would you like to set up? We can't climb into balconies, apparently. <laughs> How well, this... this this lady, this pie woman, mm-hmm. she doesn't necessarily want people with strength. It has to be mental too. So people who are queuing up and they want to seem like heroes or like the gods, they'll be generous. They'll give to the less fortunate. So <coughs> make themselves look less fortunate. Well, we're quite good at that, but perhaps uh, somewhere give. less crowded. I think this cube is the best place. Well, all right. Um, I mean, where do you want to go? I think the cube is good. I just, how would you like to look um, <laughs> less fortunate than we already are? <sighs> I mean, just get some dirt or something. Maybe take off the jewelry. I'm gonna reach Seems down. Hesitant as she starts to like mm. remove the stuff, like real hesitant. Yeah. I'm gonna reach down and like wipe my hand across the dirt, and then just smush it across one side of her face. <laughs> and, and just start thumbing it like over her brow, and then like do it to myself a little bit. Yeah. Have you got the makeup for this panda? <laughs> do you want to go outside and put some dirt on your face, please? I can appreciate. do this if you would like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, um, you guys help with each other looks a bit like beggars, which is something I imagine maybe you've done before. So you can make a very good uh, job of it indeed. Not a problem. Yes. Um, but I'm as you're doing this... About this though. Mm-hmm. Are you doing this in an alleyway or are you doing it like <laughs> right in front of everyone? We'll do it in like an alleyway and then come and sit by... <laughs> actually, 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 <laughs> so um as you're doing this unfortunately for you you see in the similar balcony as you saw earlier that you're trying to climb up on um two people have occupied this balcony <laughs> at the side of the, at the top of the town there and they too unfortunately for you seem to be performers of some kind as um one of them uh holds their hand out simply with nothing in it sort of a sort of a squat man quite short but quite sturdy as well. Um, but the woman with him, shorter still, but quite livelier and quite um, quite more slimmer, she jumps up from the balcony and into his hand. But she's only around a, th- a foot shorter than him, but she pinpoints her toes into his palm with such strength that he just has to hold it. And she's there on his palm. And then he throws her up and she kicks her legs off at the same time. And she manages to do a flip before he catches her again 
in his hand. This goes on for some time of an intricate display of acrobatics in which he is a sturdy, sort of immovable stone of a person, just holding his hands and letting her jump between them. And it's sort of a communication of balance between the two that is absolutely foreign to anybody who would possibly attempt it without intricate, intricate years and years of practice. But everybody is staring up at them, and it's not long before he simply throws her up into this into the air, some twenty feet off the ground, as she sort of flips forward, and it's impossible for her to fall on him now as she's been launched into the crowd, which make a space for her, and she just falls onto her knee and then stands up and finishes with a large flourish, and then everybody scatters their coins all along the ground for this couple of performers. Maybe if I had a better partner, we could do that. I want to look at the dirt on her face. <laughs> <coughs> we could be doing that, and you want to beg again. I thought we've... You couldn't carry me up to a balcony. You couldn't climb a wall. I t- you didn't lift me up. I wanted a leg up. Can we've done this ten leg? times, and every time. Well, maybe I climb, then. But uh, can you perform? Is... No. That's what I thought. Um, well, maybe we'd be more resourceful. Um, some boxes, a stand. Maybe we ask that man who can clearly throw people. Maybe they'll help. Great idea. We'll just join them. Why not? They'll take us on now. I'm not enjoying your sarcasm. Well, Larkin, <laughs> you were talking to a child who was talking about a man becoming pudding and a hole mm. that is not going to make us money. Well, you never know. Uh, Cleo is really good at getting information. I thought it was worth a shot. Sometimes I think you forget about Cleo. Remember why we're here. That's not fair. And sort of like the... The amusement is pretty much gone out of her face at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you look like a beggar. So, it's fun, guys. Are you guys going to beg? Heck gonna, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to lay my oh, head my in front of me. Uh-huh. <laughs> and just, right. So <coughs> wherever she decides to just plop against From where I'm sitting and watching, do I, see, do I see that that them come back out as beggars? Yeah, sure. I'll say both you and Togonis and you, Prewit, you probably see the same thing. And uh, I'll ask Kara, what are you doing now, Kara? Uh, Amy, your character, Kara, what's she doing right now? Making my way into the city. Because I was still Making outside. my way downtown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure. Uh, yeah, moving into the city is a simple enough task, and you know where it is. I imagine you've probably been there many times by now. Um to where everybody seems to be conglomerating and sort of this uh, huge collection of people and shows being put on. And you'll hear several people, again, on top of their soapboxes, dressed in togas from Rome, from Persia, from Egypt, talking about the um, glorious Isamir, the blinding, shines his bright light upon all his subjects. You should all head to Persia, not Greece. Persia will treat you well. And the Roman, uh, Roman man in the toga with sort of the purple sash across him and the laurel leaves says, no, Rome is where the true heroes lie. Rome is where we conquer the lands and bring civilization. Let's don't listen to this man, he is a fool. And then alongside them, the Egyptians, again, it's all this uh, people pretty much interrupting one another, trying to get the last word in, uh, almost like you couldn't even really call it a debate. It's just different people soapboxing versus each other, pretty much. Um but yeah, sure. I, among these people, you will see two two sort of beggars girls who just approach sort of um, the only beggar girls around town right now because all the beggars seem to be quite well fed given all the heroes around. But suddenly in the very center of the town to your entire place town. And um, how are you going about begging? I'm figuring out <laughs> we just decided we should beg once we've sort of, you know, muscled, muscled ourselves up. Shows our first scrapes and cuts from falling earlier on. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of postures down. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I've thrown the hood up as well, and I'm like definitely like slouching. Um, uh, one of our pouches emptied, sort of open, um, in front of us. All right, After good. seeing this from a distance, Antigonus will. Uh weave through the crowd a bit and try to get a little closer to see 
they're very different than everyone else. So what's going Prey on? Prey will also will intercept Antigonus because he's seen Antigonus <laughs> before and kind of talked to him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, follower of uh, Prometheus. Uh, nice to see you again. Well, well, well. I thought we might meet again, friend. Yes, and I seem to have lost my partner to the kissing women. <laughs> well, you would not be the first from what I can tell watching this place for a few days. No. Here, I have something for you. And I dig into my bag and I pull out a little clay figure. And it's a little gnome with large ears. It's crude. It's not <laughs> perfect. It's not painted. But it looks just a little bit like you. Right. <laughs> Pray what will take it. <laughs> Thank you, friend. How much do I owe you? Well, we'll talk about that later, but I do think that uh, you seemed interested enough in my conversation, so I thought I would, I thought I would pay, repay the favor. No one really talks to a man like me; they're mostly scared. I am very interested in uh, further discussion, but uh, right <laughs> now there is another curiosity. Uh, did you notice those two uh, snake people? Is you on tea? Is that what they're called? <clears throat> Yes, I've seen, I've seen a few around here, and mm-hmm. some appear to be heroes uh, attempting to uh, prove their worth, but these two are not. I'm curious as to why they're here, and I seem to have lost my partner, so if you would accompany me. Uh, used to walking around with a bodyguard, are you know? <laughs> no, I'm used <laughs> to walking around with a taller head. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, through it. Uh, you'll feel a hand on your shoulder and turning around you'll see Kornak and he just has several kiss marks across his face <laughs> like six or seven and he'll just look down at you and say Pruitt I need some more drag me <laughs> uh, Karnak do not spend your retirement so quickly sorry it's for a good cause I'd, I've just got to do something with it that's over here you stay here just give me the drag me I'll be right back I will give you one more. Okay, okay, one more. <laughs> and I'll give him a drag me. Yeah, and he scurries <laughs> off like a kid with giving like money for candy. Like, he just <laughs> runs off, almost skipping through the crowd. It's a very strange <laughs> sight for an orc. Like I'll a full be walking orc. towards the beggars now as well. Sure thing. So you see uh, a bunch of, uh, I'd say probably a few people surrounding the beggars, but I'll let you guys take over. I mean, you guys are um, begging, obviously not quite beggars because you've been putting quite an image around town so far. Um, <laughs> <coughs> but go ahead and make me a performance check, please, Larkin, because you're the one who's like putting on the cough. Luckily, I don't have to put on a cough because I have the cough. So. <laughs> oh, no, uh, uh, I'm the one putting on a cough. Yeah. But uh, you can do it with an advantage because you're being helped, I guess, by a sister, so. Oh, yeah. not a sister. All right, so that is a th- uh, 18. 18 is pretty good and people will drop coins as they as they walk by um sort of scattering not even drachmi but these sort of, sort of smaller silver pieces which i can't remember which make up drachmi but um yeah it's not too long before someone walks by and without even stopping they throw two coins down into the um sort of outlook how have you got to collect these exactly kind of like my the thing that she wears on her head kind of laid out in front so people okay. can yeah. Pop coins in it. As soon as they do, pick it up, pop it in the box, lay it back down again. So you've got, for lack of a better word, it's like a do rag, but like it's like a you know an ancient yeah, do rag. Yeah, right? yeah. So you've got that laid out, and like yeah, people are dropping coins as they go by. Not just coins, but bits of like used food, like breads with uh, like bites taken out of it. The things given to beggars in this time. But um, as it's going, as this is going along, uh, someone passes by and drops two coins into the uh, thing, and they don't even stop. They just walk by and drop, uh, drop two coins along with the other dragon. But these coins are larger. They look like they might actually be worth something. <clears throat> uh, she'll kind of cough and nudge Larkin. <coughs> oh, no. Gather them towards her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, kind of take a look at these coins and almost offer the other one to her to have a look at it. You uh, ever see anything like this? in your travels. Have I? Um, you've seen coins. You've seen a lot of different types of coins before, but this one's larger, more intricate, and with the Roman numeral VI carved on it, it's a bit of a strange one indeed. Never never with um, this, this, this number, never quite this size, um, but I suppose that's for later when 
We're not still collecting. <laughs> and I'll sort of pocket it. Um, it sure. Uh, um, I think a scope around um, is, mm. um, pardon me, is the familiar faces of the big haired man that I noticed before still around? Is like is is Prewit in in obvious uh, view? Seems like there's a lot of people in the center of town right now, all sort of scattered around. Um, once you've paid attention to each other, surely you'd see each other at some point. <laughs> uh, Prewit and Antigonus are making their way directly towards them, so at some point they're going to be. So am I. Okay, sure. <laughs> is man again, and like sort of making like that awkward like I think they're coming our way eye contact. And sure enough, Preywit um, makes his way to the front. It's kind of hard to see him until he does, given his short stature, but he's eye level with you, although you're sitting. And uh, backing him up is uh, another orcish figure, uh, different than the one you saw before. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yuan Ti, does uh, the new god of Egypt, uh, does his hand extend this far? It depends. Um, which which god are you speaking of? <laughs> Larkin kind of ignores them and just continues like spare change type thing. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. gods do you worship? <coughs> I don't necessarily worship any of them. They're just there's so many. Um, they all play their part, I suppose. And why so far from home? Okay. Why why do you care? I'm curious. I have been to Egypt. I would be interested to know how many of the ideals stretch this far. Does him saying he's been there give me some sort of uh, skeptical vibe there, Prewit? Uh, I mean, it's pretty much what I sounded like. It's. Uh, he's, he's, oh, oh no. Nice. He's done it Ooh, again. Is... <laughs> oh, no. Okay, right, so there's something smashed. <laughs> oh, In my defense, what do you mean again? That's the first time I've ever had it. I had it on your door as well. Did it? Yeah, you smashed, I've smashed the wine yeah. bottle. No, so and that, wine happened, bottle. Oh, right. that happened when you were talking to me and Kylie earlier too. In a right, I've got to stop smashing stuff, man. But okay. Um, <laughs> in the distance, you hear a smash. <laughs> right. How's that for immersion, huh? Right, so okay. Uh, right, no worries, it's fine, no worries. Just the little thing. <laughs> yeah, you're getting a very skeptical vibe off of Preywit, but not necessarily um, hostile. It's not yeah. like he's going to attack, but very okay, um, very inquisitive. Well, to be honest, I haven't been there uh, since I was a kid, so I guess it's not that relevant to me personally. And what long are you... way to travel? Uh, you as well. I don't see many you around. Allow me to introduce myself. I am private Roman. Uh, I am a gnome from Gaul, but I am a Roman citizen. And he'll tell you that a few times every every five minutes. He's pretty proud of it. <clears throat> <laughs> you are as well. You made the statue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Antigonus is my name, if you care. You imagine you might not. Well, I'm curious. Uh, I'm Larkin. Are you... And this is Nudge, Nudge. This would probably be where I go to Larkin. Oh, hello, my dear. Are you hungry? And it'll go to hand her a coin. <laughs> oh, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> <coughs> oh, okay, there's one for you as well, yes. Uh, not to Larkin, sorry, to Yarlin. And he'll, <laughs> he'll give her a coin. <laughs> All right, sure. You know me, Harry. I like, I like to throw up a few spanners in the works. It's the one with the with the uh, with the six on yeah. it. Sure, you give him the one with the six on it. Absolutely. Uh, get yourself some food, dear. Oh, thank you. Very and then he'll carry a walking off. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you accidentally give them the one with the six. On it. Sure. Just nudge luck. <laughs> it's another one. Hmm. Do you think they'll be worth in scrap or something? Yeah. This is like very hush hush. I'm not sure, but um. Do you, uh, do you know what these are for? I, these don't buy us food, but I'm... You know, you should not whisper next to one with such large ears. <laughs> but I happen to have the same coin. Well, what are they for? Holding it sort of close. 
as though by happenstance it is at this time where several people file out of the temple next to you and indeed someone comes out bell in hand and begins ringing it six times large heavy tolls that ring out right across the town quite a large bell that he seems to carry with certain ease with his immaculate sort of white gold armor and his red cloak over his head he rings it and he shouts out to the people in the immediate vicinity those with the six coin it's time to meet the Pythia. Come and show yourselves. Oh, that would be us, Palamedes. <laughs> They'll start walking up. Sure. <laughs> With your cane in hand. Are you the first one up then to him? Oh, I'll hold he... head over, obviously. I'm, I'm not far yeah. away. <laughs> Since you're the first one there, I'd say that you immediately head over to him. Um, he stands right in front of the temple entrance and he looks down to you and he just sort of looks back and says, Move aside, old man. We're waiting for heroes here. Oh, I've been invited. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you have. Do you have a coin? Uh, yes. He'll just pull out some, like, coins in his hand. Probably drop a couple, then he's going to skitter <laughs> off. Uh, and I'll just hand him a drachny. He looks down at it and says, That is uh, not what I'm asking. There is not an entry fee as such. You need a coin with the six bell toll on it, the six sign. Oh, I had one of them. Well, present it, damn you. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll step back and start looking for his pouch. <laughs> All right, yeah. But I see him. You're just fumbling around yeah. like a kid without their homework. You just yeah. cannot find this, uh, <laughs> this coin. And as he does, I'm sort of flashing the coin he handed me to Ya Ling as the guy is announcing things. What, they'll take it from us. We might as well just cut our losses and sell it. I don't know. Why would we want to see the woman? I don't know, but why not? It's not worth anything. And look up to Antigonus and pray with. Um, what is, what is your plan for this? Well, I too was given a coin that uh, was not originally mine, and the woman in red told me that it was destiny. So perhaps you two are being called. <laughs> I will go. Do you believe in destiny? In fate? I do not know. I have uh, a certain amount of experience, but uh, <coughs> this is not one of them. If fate and destiny are real, they're cruel. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Then. All men have the same destiny. Death. And I just start walking towards them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You're really fun. <laughs> Eyebrow raise. <laughs> Very well. Where are you walking towards, Antigonus? You didn't say. I'm walking up to the uh, to the guard the, 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 where, where the crowd's been going in. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you'll I'll see several, about five feet behind. Sure. You'll see several people filing out of the temple. Of course, as earlier, um, several people who look like they're quite well armed, well presented, uh, either with wits or with sword. They seem that they can carry themselves of some decorum. But they just pass you without saying a word until you uh, pass an elderly man fumbling with his coin pouch and a guard ahead of him. The guard is sort of not your typical town guard. The intricate patterns on his metal armor seem that make, make him some sort of someone of some regard. Um, and his sort of red cloak that sort of draped over his face, just barely touching the top of his hairline as he looks down at you with these very cold blue eyes. And he just holds out his hand and says, Coin. Hmm. Prometheus, bless you, friend. And I put my coin in his hand. Careful. Be very careful. He'll say to you, Antagonus. Hmm. You. Coin. I'll present him my coin. <coughs> <coughs> Wait inside. And he'll step aside. And yeah. um, inside there, you'll see... Um, a sort of um, a bench, sort of and blanketed stone marble waiting room, with several plants around, scattered around, and another door further in. But this one seems much grander. But you are cut off from the rest of the town. This place is lit by very soft torches, um, and there are several benches there. And the guard outside looks around. He says, "Anyone else? Coin of six, six tolls." Yeah, come on, come on. 
Whatever it's worth, we'll, I'll stay up late and we'll make at least this or more. It seems worth investigating, is it not? Would you rather sit here and be dirty some more? I guess we've uh, pulled in a little bit of coin, and if you're willing to do the work for me, then sure. Fine, yes, deal. Come on. Uh, Yelling will just quickly flag down a random hero. Um, Okay. Excuse me, sir. Uh, How much would you pay for one of these coins? And uh, he'll take a look down at it. Um, Which coin are you showing him? The one with the six on. She's holding it very tightly. Okay. He'll take a look and um, he'll take a look at his coin, which was, you can't tell what number he is, but he pockets it again and says, "Uh, 100 drachmi, if you can give me that coin. (laughs) Yelling looks over at Larkin. 100 drachmi? And that's to a man who already has one. Two questions for the Pythia is much more valuable than one. She can tell you anything. Anything? Anything. She is the prophet. Speaks with the wisdom of the gods. I'm just looking expectantly at Yowling, waiting for like the decision to appear on her face. (laughs) 150. Yelling will look over at Larkin. Do you actually have that much drag me? <laughs> yes, indeed I do. How much do you have? I have enough. Name your price. Two hundred drag me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, big spend. <laughs> <laughs> One million. That's where you said it. Two? One thousand dragons. <laughs> <laughs> One billion billion dragons. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's a lot, so like it's hard to get. <laughs> Two hundred drachmi. And it here then. Now. Yes. Two hundred drachmi, and you get this coin. Very well. Hand me the coin. And does the drag me? How about we both put them on the floor? You first. And he'll um, unclip a pouch of coins from his belt and he'll take a few out and he'll throw the pouch to the ground. Does it look heavy enough to have that amount of gold? Make me a perception check. I want to count it. <coughs> and she'll go to grab it. This coin is coin of six and they are asking for six now. We don't have time to count drag me. Well, then we best count quickly. Uh, Maybe a perception check. Uh, 19. 19, yeah. It looks heavy enough to be 200 drachmi. I will pick up the bag, look at Larkin, and run to the Uh, guy who has the coins. (laughs) All right, okay. Very interesting. (laughs) So, Larkin, um, you just see uh, Yarling take off. I mean, like, scuffling, leaving behind all the other, like, everything else, and just, like, legging it to this guy who has his arms folded, just escorting antagonist and Prowet through the doors. And he turns back around to the man tra- still trying to fumble to- with his coins, but he sees, sprinting towards him, this dirty face sort of raggedy yontai, and he just puts I his hand up saying, whoa, 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 whoa. A man's trying to steal my coin. A man's <laughs> trying to steal your coin. He's trying to steal my coin. He, he roughed me up and everything. That's unforgivable. No, but uh, make me a deception check, really. Not <laughs> 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 twenty. Oh, not twenty. Okay. I, God, I God, this man! He's trying to steal her coin. Disgrace for you. The Pythia gives one question each. You cannot steal a question. And with that, he'll sort of begin trying to wrestle his way around the guards, who sort of enclose on him and grab him by the elbows. And say, like, "No, no." She, I, I'm, I'm up and on my feet, like, I just slowly stood while um, yelling ran. And the minute she like has made a scene, I am hot on her heels with both coins and whatever is left. Sure thing. So you've got, you sort of bundle up everything. Oh, yeah. And, just... um, this guy's sort of being pulled back. And he says, well, no, it's, it's, it's not fair. It's not fair. I paid for it. And you just get dragged away. But, um, yeah, that's cool. Go ahead and take a point of inspiration there. Um, <laughs> oh, Oh, that's, a, that's, ha- that's handy. And I'll just walk in. 
Oh, right now, the God is still there. there? Is he? Oh. <laughs> the God is still there. It's his compatriots who've dragged everyone away, unfortunately. Which you can try and just walk in. I'll tell you what, roll me a stealth check That's and try not- and. Trying, no, he, trying would, roll, he would trying be trying to sneak in. Though. Yeah, I, I get what you're trying to do. I just want yeah. to see how this would work. Go ahead and try and roll stealth. Stealth. Yeah. <laughs> nine total. Well, nine. I wanted below ten because effectively what's happened here is this guy is trying to order everyone around, and you, plain as day, sticking out like a sore thumb, like you own the place, just walk past him into <laughs> it, not trying to stealth, but no, like no, but you're doing it so blatantly, so obviously <laughs> that no one seems the reason to question you. <laughs> just walk in and open the door and let yourself in and close it behind him. And soon enough, the guard's turning around and saying, sneaky old bastard's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, very well. Just present your coins, girls. And he'll hold out his hand to you, yelling. And Larkin, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like coming to like a, a less of a sprint and sort of skidding up behind yelling and just putting mm-hmm. a coin in that man's hand without saying anything and just going through the door. Very well. When we go through, I'm just going to... You still have the other coin, right? Of course I do. Oh, <laughs> you're not good. You're not 200 awesome. track me. Yeah. So <laughs> you <coughs> go and add 200 gold pieces to your inventory. <laughs> <laughs> and as we're walking in, I sort of whisper to, uh, um, whisper to Prewit. <clears throat> uh, Prewit, was it? Right? Prewit? Uh, yes, it is Prewit, Roman. Mm, did the man at the front, did he know your name as you walked in? No, I do not believe he did. Mm. He said my name. Strange. Let's keep walking. It is interesting. But yeah, um, so five of you in this waiting room now together, um, sort of benches scattered around, stone marble benches with intricate sort of uh, carpets placed upon them for comfort and lit torches and intricate plants of strange designs, perhaps from a distant empire, sort of line this very, in, uh, very, very sort of elaborate temple to Dionysus. But with that, the man turns around, preparing to close the doors. He gives one final shout. Anyone else? Coin of six. Here, I'm here. You almost missed the deadline. Well. Oh, there was a lot going on. I was just watching. Mm, the Pythia does not wait for anybody, so hurry up and get inside. The others are waiting. All right. Out of curiosity, did I see the sassy woman with the five coin come out? Yeah, she was one of the most last people out. So with that, what does she, she look like? Um, she looks like pretty plain face, pretty stone face. Make me an insight check <coughs> if you want to sort of yeah get a good indication of what she's feeling like. Yeah. Just curious. 18. Okay, yeah, she's pretty disappointed, but she's not too disappointed. Just She's wearing it well, at least, you know. The Pythia had something to tell her, it seems, but who knows whether that's what she wanted to hear. Hard to tell, even with a 19. So, yeah. Uh, as you're escorted in, the guard's right behind you. Um and he closes the doors behind you and the room is only lit now by the torchlight. You can hear the bustle of people sort of singing, dancing, laughing outside, exchanging stories still, but only through the very, very thick stone walls of this temple. He turns to all of you, hand on his gladius, looks from one of you to the other and says, my name is Aquilus. I am the guard of the Pythia and I will need your weapons before you meet her. With that, he'll take a wooden sort of bucket and place it in the center of the room. If I find you're hiding anything from me, trust me, I will deliver vengeance upon each of you as you just deserve. I'll Um, walk up first. Take a spear out of my back and put it in the bucket and then drop a mace in the bucket as well. Can I keep the shield? Yes, good man. Next, you, gnome. Weapon. Pray, pray will approach, draw out his Gladys, put it in the bucket, as well as a short bow off his back, a short recurve bow. And Good. place it down as well. Anyone Abstract, else? You do not need the arrows. We do need the arrows, yes. Take off his quiver, <laughs> <laughs> put it down. Good. As he walks by me, first lesson never run your mouth when you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Second lesson. Always look for a knife in the boot. I'll, I'll go up. What was that? 
I probably <laughs> won't say anything. Look <laughs> over to the rest of you. I'll, I'll, I'll you. go out and put my dagger in there while leaning on my staff, <laughs> and then just walk off. Staff as well. Oh, oh. And it'll try and fit it in the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> sort of hang out and almost disbalance the bucket and almost topple it over, but he grabs it as soon as it's about to. It. God, I feel like I'm grabbing my microphone. The same thing. <laughs> as soon as it's about to fall, he gets a good grab, gets a grip on it, and he holds it there. So the apologies, um, old man, but anything that can damage the Pythia is too risky. I hold out my hand for Herodotus and sort of say, "You can be, I can be your staff for oh, a while. Oh, th- thank you, young man. Mm. And he'll uh, walk off with him. We get this back, whatever we give. Of course. You'll all return to you once you are clear of the Pythia. If you introduce any damage to the Pythia through your fists alone... Authority is given upon me by Greece to dispatch you from this life and have you meet the gods earlier than you assume. She will, uh, the only thing you can really see her holding is her cassinets, which she will take off, pop them in the bucket, and then will put her leg almost up, move her skirt out the way, and unequip all like the daggers and the knives and the crowbars <laughs> and the like everything just like, attached to her thigh. Just take it all off. Sure. Dump it's it like in. Uh, the Matrix scene, I guess. Like, Pretty it's much. Slamming loads of guns <laughs> down and stuff. Oh, like, so, yeah, it, it eventually this bucket's sort of over brimming with little knives and stuff. It just looks down with a bit of um, a bit of a, like, um, he's been impressed by the amount of things that we managed to get beyond his view. He's like, yes, uh, very well. I suppose it would be worthless to check you for any more. And if any of it goes missing? Hmm. You have my word. What of you? He looks to you there. Um, Larkin. We'll approach somewhat skeptically, and I want to hand Yao Ling on the, on the sly the, um, the extra coin we have. Mm-hmm. And then just like from various pockets, dagger, 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 <laughs> dagger, dagger. <laughs> um, Very well, it gets to the and, point and where and it can't be filled anymore by this point. <laughs> <laughs> Are you with do all of your uh, snake friends in Egypt carry so many weapons? <clears throat> many of them do, yes, but many of them have no need. They are mysterious and the arcane. Hmm. Uh, what have you, girl? Weapons. Whatever you have. And it'll, she can't move the bucket anymore. It's too heavy in any case. <laughs> it's full of bloody knives and swords and a cane and things. So he'll just hold ho- out his hand and say, anything you have that can cause damage to the Pythia, I need it. So I'm just kind of looking at all of this that's just happened with all of these weapons flying and I just take my staff and hand it over. <laughs> no, take it. No, say it. Rule, we return to you. But it is time that you met the Pythia, finally. Tell me. You don't look like heroes. At least none of the others we've had in here. That man's about 80 years old. Look at him. <laughs> at this point to you, Herodotus. I, I'm I'm look, I, I look behind me. <laughs> 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 So we've got an old man, two beggars, half walk. Uh, Tell me, where are you from? I don't recognize the flare in your hair. It's strange. (sighs) And then he's actually looking at Kara. (coughs) What? Like uh, red hair is pretty rare in Greece, I should say. Oh, well, I'm I'm not from around here. I've traveled Hmm. quite a long way. As have many, as have many. And you, barely up to my knee, and you want to be a hero as well? Yes. Well, you can call me a soldier. I'm not sure that hero is the appropriate title. Hmm. Very well, very well. I will be right back. Prepare yourselves with a question for the Pythia. Anything you wish to know, she will answer. Such is her divine wisdom. A single question. Yes, a single question. Each? Each. Okay. Pythia's time is valuable. Sure. Larkin, what are you going to ask? With that, he'll leave the room and go ahead and leave you guys alone. 
for a good are few minutes. Are you all minutes. right? Uh, are you all right, old fellow? Do you need to sit? I'm not sure. <coughs> oh, yes, please. Thank you. My old knees are what they used to be. I pull out my potter's, like the little bench, the little stool I have for potting, and um, oh. give it to him and let him sit him down. <laughs> <clears throat> What's your name, sir? Uh, Herodotus. And, and this Do is I Palamedes. recognize that name? This is, uh, make me this a history is check. Uh, I would like to as well. Okay, uh, sure. Anyone who wants to can make me a history check for the name. is my total for history. If he's if he's well for me. known, then I probably if I just hear. Sure. It. What did you say there, Pratt? Thirteen. I am an 13. expert in history, though. Okay, interesting. Uh, what about you there, uh, Yang? Uh, history. That's thirteen. That's it. Okay, you haven't heard of him, but I'm saying I probably may, may have heard of him. Um, mm. It's very difficult to say if the man that's before you is the author of these articles as far as the far north, a place called Iceland, even this man's been as far to. A pretty strange and well-traveled fellow who documents accounts as they are. A different form of writing compared to o Homer or Virgil. They seem to tell accounts fully as accurately as they can according to life. Many, many, many documents have been written by this man. You know this to be true because he is one of the most predominant um, students of history in the world. But it couldn't possibly be this person. He seems too dawdly, too brittle. Uh, Herodotus, no? Uh, yes, boy. Uh, you were named after the famous Herodotus? Or... Uh, uh, yes, I believe so. I believe so. <laughs> right. He's looking uh, around for Palamedes. Well, you are inside, and unfortunately, Palamedes is outside right now. Still <laughs> circling the town very slowly, and it's very laborious flapping for this very fat owl. And this is a fat owl, by the way. It's not not a very nimble owl. Like a sort of <laughs> chunky sack of meat on two wings that floats around. <laughs> Stupid fat owl that it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I've developed a hatred for him. <laughs> but yeah, he's a um, very laborious owl. But yeah, he's not in this room with you right now. Oh. Herodotus, from uh, which part in Greece are you from? Um, oh dear. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't remember that. Hmm. That is a very big not to remember. Uh, yes. Oh. Hmm. Some might call it a blessing to not know your past, to only live in the present. Do you, do you always, you know, walking towards death and blessings to not remember, are you always this peachy? Me? <laughs> you caught me on a good day, dear. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to kind of sniff near the old man. Uh, does she smell booze? <laughs> Maybe a perception check. That's good to say, I, I, have, I haven't wet myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah was it? Uh, that'd be a nine. A nine. <laughs> Hard to say. Might just be his breath. Who knows? <laughs> it's, there's no. That's not... right. It's falling even further. <laughs> <laughs> Professional D and D. Yeah. yeah um, She's just gonna turn back to falling through the earth at this point. I don't know how get any deeper in. What the Do I see her sniffing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll see it. I'll, I'll, I'll start sniffing as well. <laughs> All right. So it's make me a strength. perception check if you want to, Herodotus. I rolled a one on a dice, so <laughs> <laughs> four. Uh, you don't really smell anything, unfortunately. It's hard to say. If there is the more intricate sense of this woman, it's difficult to tell. Uh, I'm afraid I can't. <laughs> I can't smell it either, dear. He doesn't remind me of Hector. I just think he's seen Niall. I don't mm. know. He is part of the reason. Hector? Who's Hector? Can I roll a history check? <laughs> if you want to roll a history check, you can roll a history right. check. Uh, 17. 17. Hector is a great warrior who has recently died in the Trojan yeah. War. Oh, oh no, um, he died, darling. He died. Yeah, slain by Achilles and dragged oh. his body around the Trojan walls. Almost a lot of the time, yeah. He recently died, actually. I've got some notes here somewhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you do, sir. Um, I'm sure. Uh, kind of scurries away from the crazy old man. <laughs> Who's crazy? Right, you just called me Hector. 
<coughs> with that, the guard re-emerges into the um, waiting room, and he looks to you. Aquas is his name. Looks from one of you to the other into the weapons. Noticing they're all there, he'll say, it's time. I hope you're all prepared. Meeting the Pythia can change people. I'd recommend not to ask how you die. I've seen great men fall to that knowledge before. Beyond that, the knowledge of the world of the gods is yours. Follow me. What, what are you going to ask? I, I haven't thought of a question. <coughs> I don't know, but we better get the oh. money's worth. <coughs> we already have, but anything? I'll stand up and put my hand on the half walk. Are you ready to go? Do you have your question? Uh, yes, I do. Yes. Very good. Perhaps you should lead us. I like to follow those with experience. Oh, how, char- how charming. I'll start walking towards where mm-hmm. the guard's going. <clears throat> yep. Take him with me. Pray what follows Antigonus. It is a narrow corridor, but it is well lit with torches and marble columns. Um, a long silk carpet with benches either side. And again, plants and potted vases just scatter each side of the corridor. You'll see sort of a lattice of wood that sort of um, lets you know exactly where you're walking into already. A long, long room, sort of like a long widespread hall with a statue of Dionysus at the very end. But it's been occupied, it seems, with several flowers and sweet smells of incense and several different smokes sort of rising around the room, giving it a haze at the ceiling. You hear just slight tittering between the um, several assistants you see lining the walls. One assistant with the same robes you see, the same red robe, sits at the very base of the dais upon which the statue of Dionysus is set. And alongside her sits another woman of the similar robes, no more different than any of the other assistants in town. But she is the one who stands as you enter. She is the one who clasps her hands together and looks from one of you to the other and says... Ah, more have come to seek the knowledge of the Pythia. Tell me, which of you sees yourself as a hero? Scoots farther back from everybody. Several eyes are upon you in the room now. As as with all people who walk in, the several assistants look at you from beneath their hooded cowls, their piercing eyes on your backs and your sides on your fronts, as only one woman stands at the end of the dais, looking from one of you to the other, and with a slight smile on her face that's as much unsettling as it is subtle, she just gives a small blink of her eyes once. None of you? I would see myself a hero, but not a Greek one. Hmm. Fortunately, that is not a requirement. You step forward, and she'll look to you, Larkin. I can't see you in the dark there. Take a couple steps forward. Stop. A good. Turn around. <laughs> Yarling's just smugly Whoa, looking like, at Larkin trying now, to laugh. <laughs> now just looking at everybody else. Yeah. The other five sort of look at you as you look back at them. And she looks at this thing on your back. What is that? Well, if I'm gonna be honest, that's what I was gonna ask you. <laughs> Even I am not sure. Unfortunately, I can't offer you any answers in that regard. Where did you come across this... this thing? Um, in the desert, when I was a child. I've had it forever, and... Um, can I tell if she's does is having... um like that glow in her eyes that I get when I am seeing magical items or not? Uh, you can't tell if that's the case with her. Um, she doesn't make any any sort of sign that she's casting a similar spell to that. Do you want to explain for the rest of them exactly what she's referencing? Sure. So the sort of MacGyver-esque um, 
uh, sling has a like a something the size of a jewelry box attached to it. It sort of is is nestled um, like at her, at her lower back, kind of like easily pulled forward, sort of like a guitar strap might be the way a guitar would be. Um, and it's just this this thin old beat up like inconspicuous little wooden box. It looks like it would hold trinkets or something, um, but it, it is like securely wrapped there and a little, little latch on it. Where in the desert did you find it? <laughs> Have you been to Egypt in, in the vast sands? Open it. Now. Open it. Here. Open that box. Larkin looks sort of, um, I, I don't want to say scared is not quite the right word, but that, that's as close as, as it is visible to anybody else. Um, and like sort of leans away from it and flicks the latch open. And the opens back, it. Yeah, it will lean in as you open the box. As you sort of peel back the lid very slowly, let mm -hmm. it creak open. Roll me a 1D100 to see what happens <laughs> as you open the box. Oh, shit. But we'll get to that after the break. Oh. <laughs> All right. Don't you know, and I know what happens when you open that nuclear oh, bomb man. thing. So. Oh, no. <coughs> nervous. No. All right, guys, we will see you in 10 minutes. Yeah, definitely. Sorry for all the uh, nonsense going around around here. <laughs> We're right? all getting out of sword now. Back in a bit. <laughs> okay, welcome back, everybody. Pantheon uh, Session 1, Part 2. Um, and where we left off, the party had been finally introduced amongst the competitive crowds to the Pythia, the Oracle of Delphi, who would possibly tell them a single question that they had to ask any one of them. But before that, she something caught her eye on the party. Something drew her gaze, something of exceptional difference than any other adventurer had brought in before. And with that, she asked you, Larkin, to open the box you brought with you. So go ahead and roll me that 1D100. Yes. <coughs> Sweats nervously. <coughs> Pardon me a moment sure while thing. I... Uh... I what? find it in my D&D <laughs> Beyond character sheet. What did you roll? I rolled a 63. Oh, God. It's going to be the thing. Oh, I don't know. I can't find it. TPK. Carl, do you Sorry. have the, the doc up? Pull it up? Let me pull it up. Please do. See what you get there. I should have done that over the break. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Wait, I found it. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, 63, my friends, on the D100 table. you got to describe it. Yeah, huh? Hold on. One, two. I want this document so I can know <laughs> what to expect. Mm -hmm. oh, you look so Good stressed one. that this is it. This is going to be a TPK. That's it. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is done. And the odds over. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, so I suppose as the, the box opens and sort of like flinching and she's peeking inside, um, is sort of again that that same purplish green energy that was in her eyes previously keeps mm -hmm. from the keyhole, kind of coalesces a bit, um, and all creatures within sixty feet of me start to feel really sluggish for right. roughly the next hour. <laughs> okay, sure, and you'll see it in the face. Oh, next minute, I apologize. Half in speed. the next minute, I was going to say that's pretty powerful. Uh, in the right, so oh, all yeah. the faces. And all the, uh, all the faces of the Pythia's assistants and even the people around you in your party, you feel sort of like um, a heavy sort of Slow. weariness come over their eyes. Um, is there any save? I nope. don't. Is there a save? Not nope. for that one. <laughs> Everybody this is half movement half speed, speed, right? Yeah, every, everybody in range moves half speed. So, yeah, as the box opens, there's sort of a haze, I guess. And... Um, it will sort of cause extreme drowsiness as the Pythia even almost stumbles, but she's helped by her assistants up to stand upwards. But even the assistant is sort of almost on her knees by this point as the Pythia just looks up to you and says, okay, okay, please close the box. Thank you. It's already closed, already like yeah. sort of just yeah, still and half facing everybody. Um, I'll mm -hmm. never get used to that thing. 
uh, what happened? <laughs> I whispered to Prewit, and did all of the snake people have weird magical boxes with them too? Not the boxes, but the weirdness, yes. Um, so are we going to get to the questions now? One question. If we give me a minute, I feel very drowsy. Oh, excuse me. Oh, very strange. Oh, powerful <laughs> magic. Oh, wow. Very. Thank you so much for that. Um, what is your name? You're welcome. Um, Larkin. I've not experienced magic like this before, Larkin. I very much appreciate you showing me. But as you say, to the point. I'm glad it was that. <laughs> I imagine there could be much worse in there. Is, is that right? It's um, done a few other things. Yeah. Very well. Uh, and anyone who wants to make a perception check at this point. Ooh. I could use passive perception. <laughs> 20, 23 perception or 13 passive. 22 perception. Um, I rolled a nat 20. Okay. Oh, For me, that is a 18. All right. So. 18. That's a pretty good well, rolls like across the board. <laughs> there. You know, that's like a lot, a lot of late teens and twenties they have got. So, yeah. Um, as the um, Pythia is talking, she's just going on about how much this was draining on her, and all like you know uh, how fascinating the box is. You can hear um, it's hard to describe, like a sort of crack, a thud, and then another thud, and then more thuds just scattering around the temple, like almost like the snapping of wood and sort of heavy things dropping. But the Pythia doesn't seem to notice, so she says, um, which of you would like to ask a question? Pythia, there is something more urgent. Are you hearing the noises? I, what noise? I, I can hear you. Is that your question? <laughs> That's your question. Can you hear these noises? No. Next question. <laughs> I, hope not. I don't know how this works. Can uh, I have ultimate question? Uh, I have a question. It's not a genie. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Herodotus. She looks to you and says, "Yes." I, I'd like to know what happened to. My coin. I had a coin to come in here. <laughs> <laughs> the guard, he made me so I couldn't find it. She smirks and then she looks to you from He's you. He's completely serious. Yeah, sure. And she accepts that. And he, no question is too large. You're too small for the Pythia. So she looks to you and smirks and then looks over to Larkin and yelling and says, Well, would you like to tell him or should I? I've since handed it to um, Yaling on the way in, so... I mean, she's going to, like, pull it out of her <laughs> top. <laughs> I guess it's worthless now. It's only got a six. Uh, you gave it to us on the streets. She'll <laughs> give it back to him. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Uh, it'll, it'll, a, I can stand with her. A crisis solved. I'm glad I could be of service to you all. And by this point, um, with your perception, I was... <coughs> You can start hearing the more thuds on the temple roof now, scattering tiles from the temple roof. And um, sort of like extremely heavy hail, it feels like. or like, um, But it's it's more like the heavy sort of meaty thuds that happen after every crack. And if you can hear it in your distant ears, a very sort of very slight sound of heavy pounding on the front door of the temple. We and at this point, hear. the Pythia hears it too. She says, what is that? These... People should wait their turn. It is a very simple system. Your bells, your tolls, your coins. And with that... Um, Are her guards doing anything? Her guards have started putting their hands on their hilts and started walking down the corridor to control whoever's trying to break in. I would like my weapons back now. And Aquilus will look to the Pythia and she'll look back and she'll give a nod. Um, and Aquilus will look back to you saying, very well, follow me in the lobby. Pythia, Pythia, please. You, you I, I've traveled a so long... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, um, go ahead, Kara. I've traveled a very long way to ask you a question, please. I, I'm, I'm worried we may not have time, but I will try. 
please, my child, go just, ahead. Please, I just need to know what what do I need to do to save my people? And she'll look at you and um, it's as though she wasn't paying much attention. But as you finally say these words, she'll look turn towards you and she'll look you dead in the eyes. And it's as though you're embraced by a great darkness as her eyes sort of pierce into yours and the, her backdrop of the temple and the incense and the flowers, it's all gone. It's just her silhouetted against the great blackness. And then she looks behind her over her left shoulder and her right. And she says, a great stranger is on your threshold. A stranger to the world. What must you do to turn a stranger away? Is it right to turn a stranger away? Or should you welcome them in? What must you do to save your people? Seek the powers of the gods, but not your gods. All gods will be necessary for the war to come. And with that, she blinks and she's back in, you're back in the room. And she is there standing in front of you. And she looks as surprised as you do as she takes a step back and she t puts her two fingers on her forehead and looks at you and says, <coughs> You're deeply troubled, child. <coughs> I... I'm not sure how to help you. I, I've not seen anything like that before. That's quite worrying. <laughs> Where have you come from? I've traveled a very long way from north of the wall all the way from Caledonia. Caledonia. <laughs> it's, you shouldn't. Do not go back. Maybe it's safer to leave. Caledonia no maybe <laughs> and Aquilus will come back hand on hilt and say uh, he'll immediately approach the Pythia by all of you and whisper into her ear and she looks to each of you and says it seems the time has come <laughs> <coughs> uh, pray with so, Ardiaz's um, dagger <laughs> uh, drawn out the one that was in his, his boot um, he's gonna as the, the, the as Kara is having this conversation with the Pythia, Preywood is gonna just kind of yell out to everyone. Uh, this is the sound of a siege. We need our weapons. Has he brought the basket back in? He has. Yeah, he's dragging it along with him. He f sort of throws it on the floor, and he says to each of you, "Grab your weapons. There's something happening." Herodotus looks extremely confused. There's about twenty daggers on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Yelling will quickly equip hers and then she will actually grab um his stuff and hand it to him oh I, thank you dear make haste make haste we need to get the pythia out of here something there's something outside i, I can't explain make haste quickly and he'll, he'll grab his gladius and he'll start pacing down the corridor with a hand on the pythia even pushing her a little making her stumble her over her own steps surely Wait, she should have been able fast. to see this coming Yes, this you is would all think very... that the gods would know something like this is going to happen. <laughs> they are fickle, aren't they? And she doesn't seem to know my... a thing. Of course, Herodotus. Herodotus. Palamedes, where are you, <coughs> stupid bird? <coughs> Palamedes. Um, Go ahead, sorry. Unless the guard passes him, Preywood is going to head down the hall first and kind of take every corner before everybody else. Just, you know. The, yeah. Yeah. With his <laughs> bow drawn at the ready. There is a panic of people trying to escape the temple at this point. Assistance of the Pythia and her guards and more regular Dionysus worshippers in the temple bustling towards the door. But it is closed and locked, it seems, as Aquilus has locked it for the time being, barred at the temple doors. But you see a great axe or an axe head pierce through the door and splinter wood and sink through all the way to the edge until it forms, it, it gets wiggled out and pulled back. Nicholas draws his sword and says, be ready. There's There's um, there. Palamedes come back to me, by the way. Palamedes does indeed telepathically communicate with you. And he'll say, um, there's somebody throwing barrels out here. I, barrels of people? People barrels outside? I can't really explain, Herodotus. You have to see. 
And with oh. that, the axe head wiggles free from the door. Sorry, go ahead, Larkin. No, I'm just, I'm gonna like cozy up next to Yowling, pretty much shoulder to shoulder, back to back, like mm-hmm. um, in a defensive sort of. I don't know what's gonna happen. Posture. Okay, yeah, and Aquilus will out usher the Pythia behind him as the axe head wiggles free from the door, and again it sinks in, carves even more out of the door, a large hole beginning to form as it wiggles free again. Again, it swings over and into the door, pounding, splintering wood across all of you. And Aquilus looks to one of you and says, protect the Pythia. Grease depends on her. Is there anything in the room to shove up against the door? Um, make me no, yeah, there will be. I don't need to make a perception check to do that. Um, it seems like the benches are made of marble, so they'd be extremely hard to move. Um, but there is like sort of potted plants and stuff, they may not be very good for it, but you could try. Um, I'm just gonna attempt to like kick or shove them in the way as if, as if rough terrain, right? Just put things they're not expecting to be at the feet. As if rough terrain, what a funny, interesting (laughs) choice of words. (laughs) (laughs) As if something like that, maybe perhaps. As if rough terrain is that. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so yeah, so yeah, you scatter sort of broken pottery on the ground um, and the plants that were within this pottery, of course, but it's not long before that hole forms a lot and the axis doesn't appear again. Instead, a face appears through it. And there you see an orc by the name of Cornac. Prove it! There's someone out here! Cornac, be more careful, I nearly shot you! <laughs> what do you mean, oh, Sammy? Uh, when you get out here, there's something going on! I'm coming! They're not letting me in! Let me in! Open the door! Nicholas <laughs> looks down to you, bro, and says, "What? Who is he? What? He's What's Roman military, on? let him in! Why is he knocking down the door to the temple? Because he is protecting us! Well, can't you tell us what's, him in. what's going on outside? <coughs> Shouting to the... Aquilus um, oh, begins to unbar the door and throws it open. And as soon as um, Kornak enters the room, this bad, huge yeah. orc, this sort of burly, quite like a uh, wide set orc, sort of enters the room. A bit shorter than Antigonus, but definitely, or if not more muscular. Uh, as he grips his um, two-handed axe in his hand, he sort of uses it to steady himself. And Aquila, Aquilus sort of shuts the door behind him and bars it again even though there is now a large hole in the door to see what's going on outside. He looked from one of you to the other and says, there's things on the mountains. There's things in the sea. There's things coming in <coughs> by the aqueduct. One of them got me. <laughs> He's got me right here, bro. Can you see? And um, despite his demeanor, he'll just pull back his armor. You can see a deep gash underneath his right breast of a deep wound that begins to pour blood as he shows you. He <laughs> You got to be good, bro. I took my eye off him for a second. Though it was just a barrel, but it wasn't just a barrel. Karnak, you will no longer be in the front lines of this battle. Stay I back. Will, I'll run up to Karnak and I'll take some clay in my hand and mash it together and rub it across his wound and cast Cure Wounds. All right, sure. So the clay that's spread across his body begins to sink in as though it's part of him. And it sinks the wound together and it almost turns green along the color of his skin as though it was never there to begin with this wound. And the sort of new mound of flesh on him appears there. How much does he get healed? Nine. Nine healing. Yeah, he gets takes nine healing the wound. He puts his hand to it and says, <laughs> I never asked for healing, friend, but I appreciate that. Hmm. I didn't well, expect it. <coughs> I'm full of the unexpected. Let's move. We can't go out there. We can't go. Don't go out there. They're coming in by the sea. They're coming in from the mountains. They're coming in from the What are they? What are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know what they are. I run up to the Pythia and I say, my question, how do we get out of here alive? She'll pause for a second and she'll close her eyes and say, the question asked, the question answered. Do you know a way out of here? And she looks to you, Larkin. And, wait, who stopped the boy before? Was it Larkin or... Um, Me and Larkin. Okay, she'll look to you, um, yelling, if you stopped the boy. Uh, Larkin stopped him. But I, okay, okay. So I, I, you I, stopped him, you talked to him. She'll look to you, um, sorry, I should, that's something I should have definitely made a note of. she to you, Larkin, and say, is there a way out of here? And takes a minute to figure out what the hell she's talking about. Um, Larkin the boy. <coughs> oh, the, the tunnels. Um, that, well, if he's being truthful, a, a child mentioned is out back. Um, tunnels into the darkness. I, I don't know if they're real, but it sure seems better than the front door. 
What is out there? Aquilus, take a look. Aquilus will go and he'll put his face towards the hole in the door. And all you'll hear from this door is screams of horror. And people scattering and sort of horrible noises of breaking flesh and bone. As he looks back and says, We need to get the Pythia out of here immediately. Meanwhile, Herodotus is going through his couch of scrolls. <laughs> oh, it's uh, uh, tele- t- Teleport? No, that's no good. <laughs> oh, here, oh, here it is. <laughs> and he'll like, start uh, reading some spidery words and uh, doing some things, and he'll cast Major Armour on himself. Sure thing. So you cast Major Armour on yourself, and you just get this... Uh, how does that look exactly, you cast Major Armour on yourself? It would just be like, um, you know, like our blur works. It would be like a bl- like mm-hmm. a sudden blur, and then it will sort of like die down Fading. slightly. Yeah, so that you, yeah. Every, you can feel see a sprinkle on him now and again. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And indeed, go ahead and adjust your AC for the mage armor. But look towards the back of you and says, <coughs> an "Attack! Something." But how did they get in? This makes no sense. I think the question, everybody... more importantly, is how we get out. Larkin, Larkin, was it? Larkin. She said you have the answer to my question. How do we get out of here? Turns around, starts like the the back somewhere. However we exit out of the back of here, there's there's tunnels apparently. Tunnels Yelling where? somebody trying to find this this oh, Yeah, like down the hole. Yeah, behind the pillars or where it was listed to be. And using what we sort of um sort of know of finding little entrances like this, like yeah. <laughs> Just investigate those sort of um, spots that seem most likely to have an exit like that, Harry. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I'm looking for this uh, aforementioned tunnel in the uh, in the temple mentioned by the boy. Um, he mentioned it being near the statue of Dionysus, which is the thing on top of the sta- on top of the dais. There, a large statue of a man clutching both a full grapevine and also a jug in his other hand, looking with a very jolly expression, with a big, huge, oversized laurel leaf around his head. But rounding the back of the statue, you'll see that it seems like the um, the pedestal upon which the statue stands seems a bit narrow, a bit hollow, even. As you can see, a large sort of separation between the uh, the outskirts of it and some sort of panel at the very back of the pedestal. Uh, the, the boy mentioned a statue. Um, this way, and she'll just quickly, in in a hurry, lead them that way. <coughs> um, Is this something we can remove, like the panel? Yeah, um, we can try. I'm sure. The alien will go the other side and just kind of go Larkin on three. And then, <laughs> in a practice, like, shoop, shoop, shoop. Three, two, one. Up. Oh. Down, yeah. wherever it goes. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, so, yeah, opening this sort of pedestal behind the statue, you'll see it opens and it is just darkness. So it's sort of a, a trap door, so to speak, of... Um, into, but if you open the trap door, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll leave it to you. Basically, the pedestal opens and there's a trap door there. My instinct is to go, is it trapped? But like, give me a second. Um, uh, latch handles, like um, like, a, like a wooden trap door. Yeah, it seems to be wooden. And does the sounds of whatever chaos is happening sound closer? Indeed, it sounds like it's are surrounding you at this point. And even though the door is barred, you'll see, oh, you'll hear a sudden thud on it very quickly. And again, in rapid succession now, as it seems to get louder and louder, like raindrops on a rooftop. Just keeps getting thudding against it, against it again and again. Yeah, Have so you very, found it or not? Very quickly, just like jab the dagger she's holding it into the dirt so it stands up as is. Pull out some, um, some thieves' tools and start like fiddling however she can to open it or just de- shove the dagger in the crack and pry it open if, if that's possible. Yeah, sure thing. I said it's definitely possible. So yeah, stabbing the trap door and making a handle out of a makeshift dagger is certainly a way to open it. And it does seem, doesn't seem locked. It seems heavy, so it takes a few tries, but it does indeed finally swing open quite heavily. With a large thunk, you hear that, you know, you see the descending sort of st- like a ladder into darkness. Sort of looking at everybody real quick, the the fear of being surrounded is like a glint of, ooh, this is exciting, before she goes down the tunnel. I hate to say you're right, but you're right. I'm not waiting to see what's on the other side. 
I pull Herodotus with me, and as I do it, I grab my holy symbol at my neck and quickly say, if you're listening, I could use your help right now and cast guidance on myself and then try to help him down the hole as I go down myself. Sure. But as you guys are going down the hole, you'll hear the snapping and the splintering of the front door of the temple. It's large. With- sort of- uh-huh. Yeah, Praywit is going to wait to go last. He's going to wait at the door until something hostile comes by. He's going to shoot and then follow everybody down the tunnel. Unless unless everybody gets down the tunnel and there's a good enough time there. Sure thing. So as the door splinters open, it's not just one thing that comes through. It's several, unfortunately, Praywit. Uh, a spill of people just pour in like a rioting crowd. Um, they all look up in rapid succession. Like at the same time, all sort of bloodshot eyes staring at you, gray skin under black armor as they pick themselves up and start shambling towards you. But it's not just you there, it's um, Kornak as well. As he readies his axe and says, this isn't good news for it. Kornak, go. And And with that, um, he'll start, he'll he'll round the corner and you take a shot at one, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to take a shot at one, then book it. Sure, yeah. It's hard to see if it sinks in properly. It definitely sort of staggers one of them, but it doesn't sort of do any kind of, you know, significant effect on the amount of people there. The amount of um, people are spilling through is like a herd. They're sort of just spilling over one another and sort of forcing their way in, all in different styles styles of armor that um, you may have never seen before, actually, yeah. As they uh, make the, work their way through the corridor, they're sort of squeezing against one, each, one another, all trying to grab at the backs of you. Um, as you make your way towards the, uh, <coughs> is anyone else doing anything while this is happening? Or uh, I just <laughs> I'm lock and yeah, I'm skedaddling down the ladder. Um, not sure quite, quite where it leads. Mm-hmm. And Aquilus will be at the top of the ladder, ushering people in one by one. He'll shout, "Go, go, go! Get down! Get down! Take the Pythia!" I'll help guide her down as I after I get Herodotus down the ladder. All right. Where yeah. in, in the mix is she? She's um, waiting to get her turn going down the ladder at this point. I just slide down the ladder? Like, do the little... Whoosh. Yeah, sure. Make me an uh, acrobatics Ex- check. Expedite the process to see what's going on. <laughs> yeah. It's an acrobatic check. <laughs> I got down cold. Um, <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. It's Say again. Time. Seven. A seven. Yeah, you try it, but you, you've seen it happen. We've seen people do it, and it looks very cool, but you don't anticipate the amount of burn that comes on your hands as you do it. So as you slide down, it begins to sort of sink into your hands, and you can almost feel the reddening of your, the, the palms as you let go uh, about um, about 15 feet up. So go ahead and roll um, Gosh. roll a 2d6 and see, all, see how much damage you take. A hmm. uh, five. A five. You take five bludgeoning damage. You just oof on the back as you sort of let go, and you're falling for a good a uh, few seconds through oh. this darkness but luckily you fall into the soil and um, although you know and you're at a thankful angle at five as well you don't hit your head or anything you just hit your side of your body and take five bludgeoning damage as you uh, fall the remainder of the route and behind you who's behind you? Uh, I am as soon All as right. I as soon as I get to the bottom I'll help uh, Larkin up and <laughs> sure. as I'm holding uh, her <laughs> hand uh, I will cast uh, Cure Wounds um, on her <laughs> and that is uh, Max, so she actually gets a 11 HP back, which she doesn't need all of it, but she gets it. <laughs> all right, nice one, nice well, one. Well, I would be down there in the dark, <laughs> fumbling and uh, looking for something. And, sure thing. Oh, oh, here it is. And he'll cast a spell, but then like a jolt of lightning, I'll just whizzle off into the distance. Oh, no, no, that's not it. <laughs> and he'll carry on and then eventually get it right and cast light on his staff. All right, sure. So you cast light on your staff, and the end just immediately puffs into a glue, like an illuminating glow. And it's a very white glow, and it gives you a really good idea of how things would look in natural sunlight. As you let it sort of put it down, this very sort of jagged and port, like uh, more carved out of the earth tunnel rather than constructed, but with the several wooden pillars all the way along, an old route, it seems. And seeing that Herodotus is, is all right, I reach up for the and yell, uh, the Pythia, next. And we're halfway down the ladder, holding on and reaching up, trying to take her. And Aquilus will indeed um, grab the Pythia and he'll hand her to you, pretty much, to be uh, to be like sort of ushered down. And then he'll uh, look to all the Pythia's assistants in the room and say, come, all of you down this ladder. It's the only way out. Make sure you shut it, the last one in. Shouting up as she's sort of 
thanking yelling and brushing the burn from her hands. Yelling's <laughs> just trying to pull lock in, so we just peg it, just trying to move away as quickly as possible. I'm, I'll go with that. I'll continue I've... to help anyone halfway across the ladder, just if they feel like they can't help themselves, I'm, I'm doing my best to get everybody down there safe. What's what's the timing here? Uh, when By the time the horde basically reaches the, the area with They'll the ladder? They'll be about spilling through right now, and um, you'll see several people, all their attendants at the Temple of Dionysus, be grabbed and dragged into them and just disappear into a huge wall of hands and bodies. But uh, all you can hear is the screams while they're silenced. And as the horde moves, the fact that they're moving in so many actually hinders them as they're walking down the corridor. They're tripping over one another, trying to squeeze through like spaces too tight. They don't make it as quickly as they would, just moving one by one. But you can see them slowly gradually through there, through those wooden lattices that you saw the Pythia through before you arrived in this hall. You can see this, this wave, this moving wall of flesh, getting closer and closer until it will be in the hall soon enough where it will spill out. Garnock, go down the hall and break the ladder. Who did you say that to, sorry? Karnak. Karnak, right, sure. Karnak will just say, no, Pruitt, you go. I'm already wounded. Okay, and Prey will just uh, yell out, you stubborn orc, and, but, it'll, but it'll go down to the, to the trap door. As he's mm -hmm. yelling this, he knows that there's no time to lose. Follow me then. I'll be right behind you. I've grabbed my staff and I'm going to head down the ladder, but I'm going to wait right at the base of the ladder because as soon as the last person that I think is going to be able to get safely through is through, I want to try something. Sure thing. Um, has anyone not gone down the ladder by this point? It's an easy question. I think pretty much I'm that's everyone, right? Still halfway, and I'm peeking my head out of the, uh, the trap door now to see what I see. If there's anybody else left. Okay, sure. Um, so with this Aquilus, we'll finally, um, he'll keep escorting people down, like the other attendants to the uh, Pythia. Uh, Red-cloaked women who sort of share in her sort of um, sort of mystique and uh, dress code, uh, red robes and sort of intricate gold patterning, but they each make their way down past you, I guess. On the yeah, ladder? I'm trying, yeah, I'm, I've, I've got a hold of the half the ladder and I'm trying right, to just get okay. them past me yeah. the whole time. Yeah, and if any one of them fall, I guess you stabilize them and they each make their way down until Aquilus himself says, all right, me next. Go, go, go. How far right. down the tunnel further could we be making it in this time that people are still getting ushered in? Um, um, quite far, a few, a few uh, dozen feet, I'd say. <laughs> if we're not <laughs> waiting, if we're not waiting. I'm, yeah, you guys uh, were down first, so go As ahead. we're running, I, I don't know how much space there is, but I'm looking out to see if the kids are down there trying to play or whatever they were doing. Yeah, make me a perception check and tell me exactly how you're trying to find them. Okay, so that's a nine on the dice for, and then perception. Blah, 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 blah. Let me get it. And with uh, that last look that I had, Harry, uh, above, the, above the ladder, I want to mm -hmm. see if I see what the horde is like. Yeah, sure. It's an amalgamation of different sort of people, it seems, but people with a certain, certain purpose in their eyes. They all seem well armored. Uh, even though the armor is scratched and worn and seems to be um, sort of being exposed to some kind of the elements of some kind. It's all uh, peeling leather and stuff and um, rotten and rusted metals. And, um, but they all seem very gray-skinned and all moving in sort of, if you imagine a school of fish would, in certain directions with one another as they seek out what they need. Okay. That's uh -huh. all you see. Before, well, I'll just get back to you in a second there. Yeah, um, no worries. Yeah, as um, Aquilus passes you on the thing there, as you are waiting now just for Kornak. And Kornak, true to his word, will follow Pruitt. But he first things first for uh, old Kornak there. He will um, look down at you, um, Antigonus, and say, <laughs> Prometheus worshipper. <laughs> Thanks, he's fancy seeing you here. <coughs> Would it not be the last thing you see, friend? Get down the ladder. I'll be, I'll be with you soon enough. Tell Pruitt something for me, yeah. Don't do this. Get down the ladder and tell him yourself. Mm -hmm. and he'll grip his two-handed axe in his hand and he'll just say, "Roma and Victor," and he'll break the statue 
of Dionysus above him. He'll carve his axe into it. It doesn't break it the first time. You just see shadows of marble like scatter against your face. It stings a little as it sort of chips off with his axe. And he lands it in again, and it topples the statue over you. And it even sort of rubble falls down on you as you are in this sort of passage. I'm, yeah, I let go of the ladder and, and just drop. Sure, as you drop, yeah, take me uh, uh, 1D, uh, 2d6 damage as you just let go of the ladder. Ooh. As you just fall, you knock even off one of the attendants at the very bottom. But luckily, can she I was right. Can I try to slow myself right at the end and grab it again? <laughs> yeah, make me an athletics check. <coughs> I kind of jump out of the way because I'm waiting right at the bottom of the ladder. Uh, yeah. Total nine. Nine. All right. Um, you don't do a very good job of that, so I'll have you take the same damage as you try and stable yourselves by placing your hands against the sides of the passage, but you drop at the same speed, and it even hurts more as your fingers scrape along the jagged rock surfaces. So uh, how much damage do you think? I took eight damage. Eight damage as you sort of um, fall straight and you sort of your legs crumple underneath you, wearing all your armor, and uh, you fall heavy onto the ground, almost flattening one of the attendants who manages to just get out of the way as the uh, rubble falls around you and just hit you, just lots of scattered of heavy pieces of marble as you look up to the top of the passage and it is completely, completely blocked. Where is Karnak? Roman and Victor. And I get up, smear some clay on my wounds quickly, cure wounds myself, and then start to grab Pruitt and push him towards the wherever everybody else is running. He'll be pushed for the first few, and then he'll just turn around, and he's dead silent now. He's got this uh, intense focus to his eyes, and he'll uh, lead the way down the hall, um, passing whoever's in front. Very well. Uh, while we're doing of, this, five of um, back from that cure wounds. Go ahead and roll me a history check if you're uh, looking at the, what these people looked like earlier. I believe um, Antigonus. Natural 20 plus... Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, Say no more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, plus one. 21. 21. Okay. Natural 20, 21. That's pretty good. Um, seems to be an amalgamation of uh, different styles of armor, uh, different sort of very heavy armor for what these people were moving in. All as one force sort of spilling into each other. It was hard to tell where one body started and the other ended as it weaved its ways around, but you could see the armors and the tri styles that were on them. It seemed to be a collection of Greek and Trojan soldiers. And the gray skin, does that <coughs> pop out to me in any way as, as being meaningful? Is it Does it ring an undead bell? Because I've studied that a bit. Mm, hard to say. Well, with a 20, that's not really a the history check, though. It's more of an arcana or uh, okay. a nature or survival or something. Um, you can try and discern the exact nature of these things if you want with yeah, a... I'm just, yeah, I'm thinking about it as I move around. Gray skin, gray skin, what does that mean? Yeah. Um, 18 plus nature is plus one, 19. Plus one, 19, yeah. Um, they seem to be typical um, aspects of a creature that has been dead for some time. Okay. Sort of cold skin, cold gray hard skin and the bloodshot eyes and stuff. And But the way they moved together was a bit peculiar. But to that, you can't really attribute any thought. But yeah, okay. indeed, they do seem like some form of undead. You're right about that. Okay. Okay. So making your way through these tunnels, you can hear above you these pounding of feet, thousands of thousands. It feels like it feels as though the tunnel might collapse on you at any second. The soil pours around your shoulders, having to brush it off as you make your way through and through. It seems like it's never ending. There's no torches down here. There's nothing. It's just darkness. But above you, you can hear the sounds. Even through the soil, you can hear the sounds of screams. That's my light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your light's there, of course, yeah, as well. I uh, rolled an uh, 11 for my perception, but as I'm running down with Larkin, <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm just kind of looking, almost like scattered, <coughs> making sure I'm holding Larkin's hand like I'm with her, keeping an eye on everything and just keeping in, like keep on shouting like every five seconds, just run, just keep mm. on doing it um, oh, yeah. in case anyone can hear if anyone's in the tunnel ahead or something. Yeah, and it's not a pleasant scene. As you guys are running through these tunnels, they split off in different directions. But luckily, by the guiding light of Herodotus' staff, as he moves along at a slower pace than you'd like, maybe, but a guiding pace at least, um, they're all drawn to this light, but it's hard for some to keep up. Injured, fallen, assistance to Pythia, but she is alongside you, but her assistance, the more you look back, the more they just seem to be drop off one by one. Not so much snatched off by any kind of monster, but 
just turning at the wrong corner or falling to the wrong sort of part of darkness or losing sight of you for a split second and having to try and find you again. But it seems like as you go on, there's less and less of them until it's just you, uh, six, Aquilus, the Pythia, and about two more assistants as you make your way further and further down the tunnels. But it's hard to tell you which direction you're going. Uh, I'll have Herodotus make me, if you're leading the party, make me a survival check. <coughs> And I'm also looking over my shoulder, just keep making sure nothing's following us the sure. whole time. Five. Five, Five yeah. It's, you, it's easy to say you may get turned around in these tunnels. You may have turned back around a corner and followed it around again. These things are expansive cave systems. As you're working your way through, you'll see rivers of small streams going out to the ocean. But there's still soil and the thunderous floods are above you. And it's difficult to tell exactly where you're going. But the roots hanging down, some of them look familiar. But it's hard to say that the same ones you saw before sort of ancient ruins, um, some sort of tunnel system or basement of a house that's running parallel. So these tunnels is visible, but you keep going along and it's difficult to find your way out. Mm -hmm. Am I or Larkin able to? Because I think we are in front because we just pegged it as soon as we got down there. Yeah, um, definitely not waiting. Um, oh, right, sure, yeah. For, so you for guys, the lighter otherwise. Yeah, okay, I'll have you both roll a survival check or one roll a survival check with advantage, that's you. Uh, and go, go ahead and roll twice. Yeah. Okay, so then survival, right? Yeah. Uh, that is a 15. 15? That's pretty good. Um, yeah, <laughs> you guys are ahead of the uh, rest of the party. And um, although they are following around Herodotus, perhaps erroneously, I imagine the rest of you maybe think Herodotus knows where he's going, but he just keeps walking around in circles. Well, not well, anybody yeah. thinks Herodotus <laughs> knows where he's going. <laughs> I don't think Herodotus realizes he's leading. <laughs> right, fair enough. He's just following himself around. After a certain amount of time, Preywood is going to take the lead. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so Preywood. Um, but thankfully, um, uh, Larkin and Yara are yelling. They do indeed find a another set of um, sort of steps upwards. Um, seemingly, each side of the stairway is heavy, heavy stone blocks, like thick foot wide blocks, leading up to some sort of wooden um, trap door at the top. Is there any way to sort of just sense what direction we we headed so like from get, getting like a sense of the area when we went down and like yeah. how we traveled did we travel north south towards water uh, i'd say with a 15 you probably it's not good enough to know the exact direction that you're in okay got in. um you have traveled i'd say around half a kilometer okay in total while well down here but in which direction it's hard to say because you've made several turns some of which are um looking very similar to the others so can we still hear them above us Sounds a lot. You can still hear screaming, and um, you can still hear some sort of um, clattering and things, but they seem a bit further away, at least. Do we wait for them? We need to go back home. <coughs> and Yarling will try and open the hatch if she can. Uh, yeah, um, it is locked, unfortunately. God damn it. It's heavy, heavy wooden door that has been seemingly, there is no locking mechanism on it either. It just seems to like blank. shoulder it, like we mus muscle it open. Yeah, make me, uh, if you're both trying to do it, you can make me a strength check, uh, athletic check with advantage. You want to do that one? Sure. And while they're doing that, I'm going to uh, cast light on my shield and turn around as I catch up to everyone else and keep that lookout behind us. Sure thing. And the light that I cast is green. It's glowing in a very different color that Herodotus is lighting. It's a green sort of flame. <laughs> right, sure. And they probably, you say we're taking the lead from Herodotus, so I'll say go ahead and make me your survival check. Okay. For Herodotus. Are you happy with the characters you're playing, Lee? He's like, <laughs> like completely in it. Arthur is fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's he's a 13. <coughs> a 13. Is, though, you yeah. know, he is. He's not a stupid guy. No, no. Very smart. Just, you know. Oh, yeah. But yeah, 13 is okay. Um, and no it problem. takes you a lot longer time than the rest of them, uh, than Larkin and Yarling even to get to this um, this point where the tunnels end. Um, they all, all the routes seem to go into one direction, but a lot of people get turned around and you've lost a few people down here already, just in the darkness. But um, yeah, so go no, ahead. They're probably, they're probably going to hear like the, of just like shouldering the... Sure. Um, what did you roll the on the... Uh, oh, 17 set. and 18 on the die, so 18 nope, with no modifier. Okay, 18's good, yeah. Um, it will eventually start giving way, and you can start lifting it. 
from thing the soil of rats caked around the sides of the trap door that's not been opened for some time just pours out and sort of drifts down the staircase but you do manage to try and start pushing it open with the help of um yowling there you manage to get it lifted around and about two feet enough to squeeze through if you were really quick how far can, can we hear them or see any semblance of the light behind us You'll see, it getting to, you'll see it beginning to glow in the distant start, sort of end of the tunnel. <coughs> All right, well, then I guess we're, can we peek, peek out through the hole? Um, is, is there any sign of the more screaming or the, those bodies or blood? You can hear it, definitely, in the very far distance. But what this seems to be is the indoors of some small farmhouse, it seems. You see bales of hay and things that are kept indoors, as well as bridles and different farming equipment, as well as a bed or two, but no occupants. Well, I, d I don't know where this goes, but I'd rather not be trapped in <laughs> in a corner. They might have horses. We should get up there. Start trying to wiggle. Yeah. Wiggle through. <laughs> like a snake? Yeah. <laughs> slither <laughs> through. We're going to slither okay, through. Sure. Yeah. Um, but while I'll give her a proper boost this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. While this is happening, the rest of them catch up with you, and uh, you just manage to keep the trap door, the heavy trap door, open enough for um, Yowling to get through. Uh, while the rest of you, I see, catch up at this point. So, what's going on with you guys? If you're coming, come on, hurry up! It's, it's heavy. <coughs> I'm going. I think I'm going to have a heart attack. Go. We're not leaving anyone behind. Go now. And I'll no, look at Herodotus. I'm gonna like jam my um, quarter staff uh, in, like the, and to sort of use that as like a leverage for the moment, mm -hmm. just hoping to, to hold it and then look around the the barn or whatever space we're in while they're yeah. figuring yeah, their shit out. Looking if they've got any horses. Yeah, All right. Through. Well, before we get to that, um, I'll say that the rest of you managed to catch up, and then Aquilus will be the one to volunteer himself to hold the um, trap door at a bit more of an angle, being possibly the strongest of anyone here. He um, puts his back against it and lifts it up heavily and holds his hand out for the Pythia and her assistants one by one, ushers them up the stairs, and then he does the same, holding his hand out to you, Antigonus, Kara, and um, to you, Pruitt. I take his hand, and I, as I come up, I, I be the last one that's, that's through, and then I quickly put my forearm to his throat, and I say, those aren't the living that are following us. What's going on? Nice. And he'll look down at you in the eyes and um, make me an intimidation check, I guess. If that's actually intention. Yes, it is. Um, it's a <coughs> nine plus skills, intimidation, plus three, 12. 12, right. He'll try and bat your hand away and look you down the eyes and say, does it look like I have any idea what's going on here? The only thing I know how to do is protect this woman. I turn to her and say, you i've already asked my question but why would the why would those that are no longer alive be pursuing us this far i have not asked my question mm. she Who looked from you Karnak? <laughs> mm. very well um so you asked that question a very open-ended question um <laughs> excuse me so she'll look from you um antigonus over to you Pruitt. And um, she pauses for a second and she just, as a DM, looks up his notes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, just a second. She closes her eyes. She, she uh, procrastinates as I open this document here. <laughs> uh, scroll all the way down. Okay. She um, smiles, a, a sort of coy um, smile. As she sees something in her own eyes, you can see the flash of white, and she sort of seems to be moving her eyes around in sort of a rapid eye movement, sort of like a person dreaming, but with the eyelids open, as though she's watching like a scene out play before her. And she closes her eyes again, and then she's back back here, and she just says, <coughs> "Excuse me, it's not easy for me to look at these things." <coughs> The person you're looking for is David's Felicities. Where can I find him? 
<laughs> one question, please. It is tiring on me. While that's all going on, Herodotus is obviously sitting <laughs> down because he's lost his breath. He sort of lays back and his eyes roll back and go white. Mm-hmm. Um, and he'll tap into Palamedes' site. Sure. Um, the question is, how far is Palamedes from you at this point? I said you walked half a kilometre away, right? I'm assuming he would be keeping up. Mm, would he be? I suppose if you could keep a psychic connection with him, you can sort of keep him above ground where you are. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. But yeah, sure. I'll allow it this once before I more clarify myself with the rule there. Um, so you see him, basically, he's above the farmhouse that you're in. Seems to be on the outside of the walls of Eritrea. But uh, Eritrea is a sorry side at the moment. It is burning. It is um, seemingly uh, completely packed with people. Um, that sort of is glowing in the darkness at around what is now around 2 a.m. Uh, what was full of joy and sort of activity before now is just full of screams. As um, I say, go ahead and make me a perception check. Do you know any more about all the stuff? Um, do it with the owls things there. You get advantage, I think. Advantage, yeah. I got a 16 and a 19. Nice. So, what's the owl's perception? Um, it's a lot, I think. So, 19 plus a lot, then. Okay. <laughs> um, so, scanning around as you um doing this, I'll get back to you and I'll explain exactly what you see. But the rest of the party, is there anything else you want to be doing as you now? I say most of you are up in the um, in this farmhouse on the inside. Seeing Herodotus crash down, I pull out my my water skin and I I kneel next to him. And seeing his eyes roll back, I I wait for a moment because I don't know what the hell's going on. But I'm willing to give him some water. To choke him out by putting water down his throat while he's... (laughs) (laughs) He needs to hydrate, man. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, I was just going to say, if if I see bridles, I'll just be looking out for horses or anything. Sure thing. Yeah, um... How are you going to be looking out for them out a window or out a door or? Uh, yeah, at first, and then if I don't see any, if there's like a stable or anything like that. But obviously, mm. if I see the enemies coming, then I'm not going to go outside. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, okay, we'll get back to that. Um, Larkin, Pruitt, and Kara, is there anything you want to be doing or? Well, once everybody's through, I was trying to hold that until someone else took over, and then it's pretty much what's what's around us. Like, are there farm tools? Um, mm. Like the sound of screaming is coming from what direction? I want to be looking in the other direction and any other ways away from the, the chaos. Yeah, sure. Um, and I'll get back to that as well. Um, so, Pruitt, Kara, anything? Once everyone is through, mm-hmm. I'm going to look back at the, the trap door that we just came through and I'll take my hands and um, some sort of like green glow kind Mm -hmm. of starts and i'll do this with my (laughs) fingers and i'm just gonna cast entanglement over the doorway to just kind of like if you'll allow it of course yeah block the doorway for whatever may pursue us Mm -hmm. sure and as the trap door remains open for a few seconds you see as the stone block walls lining each side of the stairs begin to break and snap as roots start working their way through and joining with the other roots on the side. So we can see as like extremely thick strands of spiderweb, it looks like, but they are in fact plant roots that bar the way upwards through the staircase. And just before it closes, they are, the trap door is in fact like almost like sucked close as a root sort of grabs it and drags it close. And there's the amalgamation of sort of razor sharp sort of vines that enclose it. And this looks like a pile of roots. It's very difficult to get through. So yeah, definitely. Definitely done. Effectively blocking it up. But yeah, back in order. So um Pro, is there anything you want to do? Yeah, so um Oh I like oh could you repeat the name one more time that the Oracle just told me? <coughs> yeah. Um Phericides of Cyros is what she would have said in full. For okay. Phericides of Cyrus. I will spell it for you. In fact, in the um, I'll put it in the in the roll twenty chat. Cool. No. So what should uh, you to you in full? Mind so yeah, some... I'm gonna turn to mm-hmm. everyone and just say, uh, "Time is not our friend right now. I suspect that since they came so quickly, they came by sea. We need to leave by land. 
let's move. I think he said they came by sea, they came by aqueduct, they came by everywhere. Did you, mm. what are they? Did you get eyes on them? But as this so is still, going still on, looking around, yeah. obviously. Back to people, what are doing, things are looking out and things will go back to um, your owl there, Herodotus, as it is um, scouting out the area above. And indeed, the aqueducts leading into the center of the town seems to have been the main way in, as it is currently still bustling with marches upon marches of unorganized legions who are sort of bustling along the aqueduct and then falling off the edge as it gets into the center of the city, clattering down in large clumps of bodies until they all stand up and start moving in sort of unorganized but still clumped together mobs as they make their way through the town. Um, you look down in the city streets, there must be thousands. It's as though it's being filled. It's as though it's like a receptacle, the walls of the town beginning to burgeon as people are pushed against them with nowhere else to go as these things reach them and then consume them. It's hard to see what happens to them, but they're dragged into these masses of people. And from the sea, you'll see several um, black, black sailed triremes polyremes and quindremes, all sorts of different ships, um, larger, some small. The larger ones seem to have catapults mounted on the front. And even in the darkness of the sky, you can see them launching several things into the city. They don't seem like projectile rocks or any kind of flaming thing. They seem like barrels. And as the barrels scatter and hit the sides of the walls of the banners and the buildings inside of Eritrea, they break and they splinter. And out of them, as they hit the stone floors, they seem to be filled with bodies. And these barrels being fired into the town, there's bodies that get out of those barrels. It's not long before they're lifting themselves to their feet. And these, these triremes and these catapults are effectively firing in the forces they need to take over Eritrea. And you'll see the same thing happening from the mountains surrounding Eritrea, silhouetted upon the mountain tops. And on any, any level part of ground, these things can fire catapults manned by people in silhouettes in black armor, firing more and more barrels into the city as though it's never enough, hitting their own troops, smashing them against the walls, flattening them until the barrels split open. And more and more is it being filled with these decomposed and several different layers of de um, decomposition. As people are being consumed, you can hear the screams, but the more it goes on, the screams get less and less as though when these things start finally putting all their force to come <laughs> weight against the doors of manors, they give way and they fill buildings and start pouring out the windows as though they're being filled with water. But instead of water, it's just bodies and bodies and bodies. You can hear Herodotus go, oh, oh no. And then it's like <laughs> babbling out as water gets poured in his mouth. He sort of like yeah. unconsciously spits it's it all right, out. It's all right. Oh no. Oh no. Mm -hmm. what, can I down, see what yeah. the creatures are? I mean, obviously... <laughs> Have they I just seen look like this people. Before? They just look like mounds and mounds of people trampled under one another in a com in a sort of communal fit, a communal need and desperation to seek out anything that's living and consume. But not in this general sense of consume. It just seems like it's being jam-packed, this place. It's being burgeoned. Even as you're watching still, these things pour from the mountains in from several directions, filling the aqueduct, which is only about four or five people wide. And even as they get closer, people are pushed off side to side. If these things break a bone or two as they fall from the aqueduct, there's no issue to them. They'll drag themselves along the floor. And indeed, that's what they do until they're trampled by their own forces. I start gently patting him, patting him in the face, trying to get him to come back to me. He, he'd look like he's in some sort of fit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm holding him as steady as I can. I'm I'm trying to, you know, looking over for medical help. He needs more help. I'm kind of tapped here. Someone is convulsing and trying to calm him down. As this is going on, um, we've got, um, I think it's um, yelling. You're looking for um, horses and things outside the farm. <coughs> Yep. There'll, be a, there'll be a mule or two, sure. And most of it's um, some sort of uh, the cows and goats. That's what's mainly kept here. Um a riding horse there is not, though, as you okay. look around there on the outside. But as you do see it, you are between you in the farmhouse and the walls of Eritrea, which are barred closed from the outside um, with these sort of heavy, heavy, heavy um, sort of 45 degree angle stakes that have been posted along the walls as though the gates opening outwards is not a possibility anymore. You'll see a small collection of uh, more organized people in black armor looking at the gates, although they don't respond Um to all the sort of horrific cries of screeches on the inside. Um, behind them is a man atop a horse larger than you've ever seen, but
but it's certainly some kind of man at least. And atop his back is seems to be some huge, huge maul. A maul that would be like how's best to describe a maul that would not be effective for any kind of combat other than for intimidation. The amount of strength needed to swing it would not be paid off for in the strength needed. But he, he seems to have it on his back comfortably as he sits atop a giant horse, a horse itself, drabbed in black armor. But he's not facing your way. And he's a good about 200, 300 feet away, so. We need to go. <coughs> what, what do, do you, you see, see those men? And I'll peek over her shoulder outside. Yeah, a collection mm-hmm. of men and several catapults behind them. And every time the catapults fire, you'll see a collection of um, what looks to be soldiers in black armor, as I said earlier, um, grabbing a, another soldier, pushing him into a barrel, and then forcing another soldier into a barrel, and then loading the catapult again, and firing into the city. Do they seem to be wearing any nation's colors? Or like symbols or... How far away are you? God, about 233. It's a very difficult thing to tell at that distance. So hold me on perception check with disadvantage. <laughs> 15. That's pretty good. Um, wait, wait, 15 plus 3. 18. 18. Okay, yeah. Um, it's strange. They don't have any um, one uni- unifying color between them. I mean, there's different art patterns on their armors. Um, some of them have um, this very telling um, sort of myrmidon helmet which has a long black um, horse sort of mane atop the helmet but others have these sort of very blue and white armors and patterns that look more persian perhaps ilium troy um they look like trojan soldiers and greek soldiers the ones firing not not just the bodies um the ones firing and the bodies interesting okay yeah so seeing all that just Lean back inside inside the barn. How how are we gonna go? Does anyone have any ideas on how to get out of here? Swiftly and together. There's no horses, just mules, but not fast enough. We should run. We've got a head start. They don't know we're here. We can't move until he's okay. And I have to, looking for like a piece of uh, wood, and I sort of try to put it in his mouth. I think he's having a stroke. <laughs> Very interesting. Can roll me, uh, you roll me. You can roll me a medicine check if you wish to. There, uh, I'm taking this to see what's wrong with him. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah, you think he's having a stroke, um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, can he see a way out through Palamedes' eyes? Uh, through Palamedes' eyes, what do you see? Yeah. Uh, well, along the coastline of Eritrea and Euboea in general, it seems like a pretty clear-cut road, and. Um, Although Eritrea is currently under some sickening kind of caricature of a siege, it is not um, expanding to other areas. It seems like everything is pointed at Eritrea, and luckily your farmhouse there is on the edge of it. You're outside the siege, so leaving by land would seem like the most wise choice. He'll snap back into the thing, and he'll look at um, Antigonus and say, Oh, hi. I know you. you have to, I try to. You have to take a piece of wood out of your mouth. To talk. <laughs> <laughs> I know your face, and then he'll click his fingers, and then the owl will peer on his shoulder, mm-hmm. and he'll say, oh, and he'll look clear as anything. He say, "The only way out is the coast." Suddenly, looking very surprised that he's off- offering actual knowledge for a moment. Yeah. Um, I still hand you the water skin and oh, thank look you. to everyone else. <laughs> we'll drink some. Not that I trust um, our, our this bumbling old man, no offense, but is, unless anyone else has a better idea. What, what time of day is it, Harry? It's extreme light now, right now. It's like around 1 a.m., oh, 2 a.m. Oh, it's so it's dark. Good. Mm-hmm. Um, we so, repeat that time is not our ally. Let us leave swiftly. Uh, Antigas, maybe we can put Herotides on a on a mule. Is there a cart nearby? Is there any cart that we could? He stands up. Um, essentially. There's a few something. mules, but I will say, yeah, there'll be a cart as well, probably. Cal, are More we going to wait for them, or we move quicker alone? But safety and numbers, I, I, it's a little unsure. Mm. But with this, the Pythia will turn to everyone in the farmhouse and say. No one stopped to ask why this has happened. Aquilus, I can't help but notice that Adeus wasn't with us when this happened. 
they just organized this whole thing, this whole meeting of minds of heroes. Was it a trap? A trap not for all of Greece. Know. I didn't foresee anything. If I had, I wouldn't have agreed to this. Adeus has always been trustworthy. He's helped me in the past. He couldn't have... He wouldn't have... Well, then let me ask. Who caused this? Who's doing this? She'll say... She'll look to you again and she'll look over to... Um, I think you already asked your question, didn't you? Or? I haven't asked anything. All right, okay. But with that question, she'll look over to you. Um, Pruitt. Yes. Now is not the time to fret about this problem. We need to leave. You asked who did this. I've already answered that. I answered him. Right. We know who did this, and we are <laughs> running right now. Yes, please. Let's do that. Uh, I All begin right. to try to attach a mule to the, one of the carts. Sure. Uh, roll me an animal handling check. Oh, boy. <laughs> Everyone's I, uh, favorite. I, I, I ask Prometheus again for some help on this, and take six seconds to <laughs> channel myself. Rodney starts walking off towards the coast. He's talking animal to Animal handling is uh, twenty-five on animal handling. That's pretty good, man. I mean, twenty-five, definitely. Yeah, the mules are happy to help you. They even seem a bit inspired by how much you are friendly to them, and they will probably ride at a quicker pace. So. I love animal handling because everyone hates it. It's like the only rule where it's like there is an abject. If it if you fail it, something bad will happen. <laughs> like because you're messing with animals. <laughs> so as I, I get the the mule finally strapped up, I, I look in Herodotus. I'm trying to. I was going to put you him in the car. Probably see a light, a little light in the distance. It's probably only walked about fifty meters. Mm -hmm. Fuck sake! And I run to him and try to scoop him up. He's talking quickly. to Palamedes. <laughs> All right, so are you allowing yourself to be scooped up, Herodotus? Well, yeah, obviously he wouldn't have a choice. <laughs> right, okay, so yeah, you just feel Antigonus sort of put his hands behind the back of your knees and then scoop you up, and then what are you doing, Antigonus? Oh. I'm going to carry him over <sighs> the cart and, and lay him in it. All right, sure. Get out of here. Are you my right? Yes, yes, just yes. <laughs> and I lay him in the back of the cart and uh, look to everyone else. This is how I'm getting out of here. Let's go. Mm. He'll point his staff to, to, the, to the coast. Aquilus <laughs> will um, so much. Oh. will put the Pythia in the cart, but he will stand alongside it. I'll walk alongside. Right. Absolutely walking as well. Mm -hmm. You, I haven't talked to you much. Um, pointing to Kara. Um, mm -hmm. Are you with us? <coughs> yes. Safety in numbers, right? I can't face these things on my own. I think we should all stick together. You're all bound to stick together, Aquilus will interrupt. If the Pythia dies, so does the hope of Greece. Hmm. I would trust any one of you to give your life for her if you know what's good for you or know what's good for Greece. And I would trust the Pythia to give us any information that is necessary at the moment, regardless of this stupid number of questions. And with she, that, Prewitt's going to start leading the way out. <laughs> he'll follow behind with his hand on his sword again, but, you know, now drawn. Um, is anyone not going along with him? As this cart sort of starts running around. Where are you going, little boy? It's that way. <laughs> uh, I'm going to follow... Uh them to the coast if that if that's what they said the best places are trying to bring lark in obviously she won't go without you know um but she kind of kind of leans in close to lark and just kind of like i don't like this woman uh talking about the oracle mm -hmm. <coughs> um, i'm not her biggest fan either this is all very um, I guess we just need to head home and mm. get there as <coughs> cautiously as we can. We made our money, that's for sure. Mm. We've done many cons, but she seems like the biggest con man of them all. Yeah, I'll sort of just give you the... The, the knowing nod and look over at her. Is she is she um 
sort of just chilling in the cart. Yeah, just looking straight back at Eritrea. You are not to give your life for that woman. I didn't plan to. <laughs> but <laughs> for the moment, we can play along. That's what we're good at. All right, as time moves on, um, Eritrea is um, sort of lighting up the sky in the distance. It almost looks like an artificial dawn in the night sky. As you round a corner and pass the horizon at least once, you can still see in the distance a large light telling where Eritrea is burning. Um, you'll pass several people in the night, travelers, um, most like not going to Eritrea or farmers tending their land as they look up at you passing. Um, but it's not long before um, Eritrea is completely in the distance. The cold night still consumes you all walking alongside the cart. Naquilus will look from one of you to the other and they'll say, I'm still trying to piece together in my mind what's just happened. Oh, your city got attacked by lots of barrels. It's not my city, friend. These are not the living. They wear the armor of many a different country organized certainly something compelling them something something dark oh the gods do do strange strange deeds but even this seems beneath them i didn't feel the gods presence here today this was a dark day for greece the deus summoned us here heroes all the oracle in one place, how didn't we see this? How My didn't exact any of thought. What did you say? Sorry. My exact thought, and she'll like look over at the oracle. Oracle heroes in one place. What does Greece have now? Nothing. I've you know, traveled a really long way being concerned about dark things happening. Do I have any recognition of any of this? Have I crossed any of this in my path already? I was so hoping that was in character what you just said. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> By the way, I've traveled a really long way. Like, I, just, I like, know. No. <laughs> dark um, okay, roll me a Arcana check, I'd guess. <coughs> I'd love that as a character gimmick. Just keeps going like I, you know, I've made a huge effort to be here, right? <laughs> like, I, I am tired. <laughs> I did not sign up for this. <laughs> I've traveled a really long way, guys. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to believe this, but I rolled a nat twenty. No, nat twenty. That's good. Yeah, uh, and with a nat twenty, you can tell that you've never come across this power before. <laughs> Harry, mm -hmm. um, as they're sort of having this conversation of like questioning. Um, intent and in what's going on can i go and like pop a seat next to the the pythia and sort of like touch her arm and um ask uh, what do you what do you think a deus or uh had planned you said you think he tricked you how are we to trust that you're not tricking us or that he's the trickster it's she'll flinch as you touch her and, and while I touch her, I want to actually gauge her intent. Yeah, sure. Okay. She'll answer you first. And she'll say, um, Adeus summoned me when we'd learned of the death of Achilles. I knew Achilles. I knew him very well. And I didn't think anyone could hurt him. But when I learned of his death, Adeus and I were in agreement that... Greece would need new heroes. So he suggested using his town to present them to me and I could read them and see if they had this spark in them, this divinity. Did you find any? There was one or two. Many, in fact, had the capability. But <coughs> I didn't see a hero. That is not until I saw you six. <laughs> you helped us out of there and you could have left us, I saw. Well, I'm not sure I get the credit for that, but... You can go ahead and roll an insight check on that reading thing if you want yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, 14. Uh, 
19. Seems like she's been not 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 insight. Um, Oh, the the thing we messaged about. Oh, right. God. Right. Okay. (laughs) Wisdom saving for her. Uh Uh, She got a one. Okay. Well, she needs to be a 14, (laughs) but okay. All right. Okay. I want to know if she's, if she's, um, well, I can't really ask what I want to know. You can't, you're not allowed to know what this tells you. So as you look into her pretty much, you'll just hear a voice peeing out in your head. And it says, um, I'll say, sometimes people come to her and she doesn't have the answer. It's then that she makes them up to make them feel better. Preywit's gonna get up from where he is next to them and just say, <laughs> kind of out loud, but addressing them. <clears throat> Nobility is a thing lost in life very easily and earned as well. The title of hero is best given to something dead. There was only one hero today, and he's gonna walk off. Uh, Preywit, before you go. Reach into my pouch. I have the the mule straps in my hand, and I'm trying to guide it. Um, reach into my pouch there. Do you do, you do that? <laughs> Sorry, I said I said pray before you go. Reach into my pouch there. Yeah, I'll I'll go and do that. What you pull out is another clay figure, but this time of a very large orc that I had made the previous day. I um. <clears throat> I meant that to be for him, but, well, I do hope you'll find some use for it. Pray it won't say anything, and I'll walk a little distance off. Mm. I'll well. the cart after our conversation and just fall back into step with um, Yaling and sort of keep sort of an eye on the others and where we're going. Yeah, and as the cart rolls on, Pray it begins to... Awesome. Yeah, uh, it begins to like um, the sun begins to rise in the distance, and the very sort of twi- the anti-twilight, the very dawn, the dawn starts to come, and the darkness of the sky becomes a very light blue over the Aegean Sea. And um, Aculus will put himself up on the cart, feeling that he's earned some time on it after spending so much time walking alongside, keeping an eye out with sword drawn. Um, you've walked some several kilometers from Meritrea at this point. Um, he'll just look to the Pythia and say, you didn't find any heroes today. If you look around, she'll say, no, I found some heroes today. And you can all hear this. She's not trying to hide it. She says, but I feel more that they have found me. She'll look from one of you to the other. Would any of you call yourself a hero? Not in life. Hmm. A hero... A hero is only a survivor. Until they aren't. I agree with him. You all are very fun. This was a very fun day. (laughs) Get off my paintbrush. Paintbrushes, you stupid bird. I don't know if you can call a, a bumbling old man um, and whatever the rest of us are, heroes. <coughs> but we certainly are survivors. He's not wrong about that. Um, what happened here in Eritrea? I've never seen anything like it, and I doubt any of you have either. No. And I'm sure you would agree with me in saying, I'm sure we haven't seen the last of it. Look over our shoulders, like the the burning Eritrea still in sight. No, far gone by now. Far gone, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we know what we left behind, but where are we going? That's up to you. I know I was sent to Eritrea for one reason to find people who could help Greece. Whether or not you want to help Greece is irrelevant, but 
you must agree this all couldn't have happened by accident. <laughs> I am an oracle and... You didn't I see it prophesy, coming. I don't see everything. As much as I would wish I would see everything, I don't see everything. Sometimes the right question needs to be asked. And only one per person. Mm, in this situation, yes. But you must understand that whatever was back there, it could come for all of Greece. I've been a large believer that there is no coincidence and that I was sent here to find several heroes and that is what I have found in each of you. You may not see it and you may not believe it, but I believe in you. I believe you are what I sought in Eritrea. The gods have put you before me. Well, if this is what heroes are, then sure, let's let's bear that title and get to wherever we're going and see what happens. And let us remember that if the gods put us with you for some destiny or some fate, oh, every cool. person there died. Every person there died in a cruel trick from them, too. Whatever they have planned, I take no part in it. I'll play my part for my own destiny. Very Those well. Those people should not have died for this to happen. Are we, are we at basically camp for the night at this point? Well, you're still moving along in this car. You can stop for camp if you wish. Well, once we stop for camp, Preywood's going to do something, but in that, until then, he's very sullen and thoughtful. Yeah, sure, and we'll get to that. Um, but for now, we cut back to Eritrea, where um, the city is currently um, like completely bustling with people, bodies beginning to pile up to the point that no more and more can fit in. And um, although these things seem to move in unison, there seems to be shacks and um, almost some stone buildings as well toppling just from the pure weight of them moving around in one fluid movement before the large figure on his horse puts his hand up and they all stop at once. And he turns his back looking towards, a, for the first time over his shoulder, the rest of Greece. But it's there that we'll end our session for next week and see what happens with the rest of our heroes as they travel along with the Oracle here. <laughs> Yay. Mm, Harry, get some yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some sleep would be good too, but you know, yeah, there you go. Sleep, some, some quills, some I quills. don't trust the Oracle. <laughs> the that. Calm person. You were right. <laughs> I can't believe that the premiere of Pantheon came when I'm so sick. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're a trooper, man. That's great. No. Excuse me. You feel better. Hopefully, we'll have a healthier Harry. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Next week. I can't believe that. Okay, cool. But thanks, everybody, for coming and thanks for watching. You know. Thanks for kicking in, guys. Yep. Yeah. I'm super happy with how it went. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. Cheers, guys, and thank you very much for all the subs and all the support. Um, you guys are brilliant. And mm -hmm. don't forget, we will see you for Hemlora tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. see you yeah. later, guys. I'll see you later, everybody. Hang on, Bye. 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 Bye.